Seattle. And uh, my EKG is at the normal. Sure.
Mr. Rottenberg, do you have the Thank redactions for me? We have one of the two. The other one we had to make one tweak to, and we're going to do that electronically at, during my cross examination. Okay. okay. All right. So which but one do you have? You have for one. Me? Uh, exhibit two fourteen. Two fourteen. We provided. All right. Here's so the redactions. Uh, reserving your other objections, the redactions are okay. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. So two fourteen will be in evidence then. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, do you want to get the witness back uh, on the witness stand before we get the jury here? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Dombrowski? All right, let's put her on before we get the jury out. That would be helpful. You can have it. Yeah. Mr. Rottenberg, you. Mr. Rottenborn, you're going to get me 214 after? Yes, okay. Your Honor. There so, is one. Okay. Your Honor, no, there, there's 210. Yes. This is 214. Yes, 210. Okay, I just want to make sure. We'll put it up on the screen, of course, but without the presence of the jury. So the judge will see it at the same time you do. Okay. okay. I just don't have to wait for it. All right. Are we ready for the jury? Are we ready for the jury? Yes, okay. All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. All right. You can have a seat, Mr. Dombrowski. Mr. Dombrowski, I just want to remind you that you're still under oath at this time, okay? All right. You want to continue with your cross-examination? Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Ms. Dombrowski. Good morning. So I believe we, we talked a little bit about this yesterday, but you were, in addition to being Mr. Depp's brother, you were his, I believe you referred to it as his personal manager. Is that right? I have been referred as yes. Okay. And so you were responsible for or had some responsibility for his business affairs, right? I, I actually coordinated with other people, but I didn't have full responsibility. Right. But in terms of the information that you would receive, you, you would receive information that was relevant to Mr. Depp's business affairs and personal affairs, right? At times, yes. And you, you care about Mr. Depp's well-being, right? Yes. He's your brother. You, yes. you love him, right? It was important to you that you, in your role as both his brother and as his manager, be kept informed of his well-being, right? Yes. And if something was wrong, you'd want to know about that, right? Yes. Did you ever have reason to believe from anyone other than Amber that Mr. Depp had a problem with drugs or alcohol? No. Did you ever have reason to believe from someone other than Amber that Mr. Depp romanticized drug culture? No. Did you ever have reason to believe from anyone other than Amber that Mr. Depp didn't take accountability for his actions? N I didn't have reason to believe that, no. Did you ever have reason to believe from anyone other than Amber that Mr. Depp lacked patience for getting his needs met? I didn't have reason to believe that, no. Did you ever have reason to believe from someone other than Amber that Mr. Depp could act like a child if he didn't get immediate satisfaction? Objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation. 
I'm asking if she had. I, I overruled, I'll allow it, that's fine. Let me ask that again, um, Ms. Nabrowski. Did you ever have reason to believe from anyone other than Amber that Mr. Depp could act like a child if he didn't get immediate satisfaction? Overrule for this question. We'll see at the follow-up. Okay. I'm sorry. Did you ever have reason to believe from someone other than Amber that Mr. Depp could act like a child if he didn't get immediate satisfaction? I never had reason to believe that. Did you ever have reason to believe from someone other than Amber that Mr. Depp had fundamental issues with anger? Okay. reason to believe from someone other than Amber that your brother had fundamental issues with anger? I, I didn't have reason to believe. And did you ever have reason to believe from someone other than Amber that your brother didn't grasp the responsibility that he had in his children's lives? I did not have reason to believe. Heather, can you pull up exhibit 268, please? Ms. Dombrowski, is this an email from Dr. David Kipper to you on August 18th, 2014? Objection, sir. It's not being offered yet, so I'll overrule okay. the objection. Good. I don't, I don't have it. Can, can you see the document on your screen? You no. might have to make it bigger. It's much smaller. I, I, don't, I don't have anything. Oh, do you? I'm can sorry. you see it there, ma'am? No. It's not showing up on your screen. Just bear with us one minute. Thank you. Do you have a physical copy that she could look at? Not that's not marked up. Let me, um, can you see if oh. we can grab one? Oh, wait, wait, she's got it. Oh, okay. Turn it off and on, see? <laughs> that's the, that's, that's the, the trick. That's the judge rule. <laughs> Thank you. So take as much time as you need to read it, Ms. Dombrowski, but my, my question is, is this a, a, an email from Dr. David Kipper to you on August 18th, 2014. Yes, it's got my name on there, yes, it's from him. And this is an email that you, um, that you would have received on or about that date, August 18th, 2014, to the best of your knowledge? It was, it was sent on that date, yes. And it's about Dr. Kipper's treatment of your brother, correct? I'm, I'm actually reading it. Okay, take your time. Thank you.
Is there, I'm sorry, is there more to the? There's, a, there's another page um, which we can go to, but my, my question is just this, and I think we established this. This is an email that you received from Dr. Kipper, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, Your Honor, permission to publish the, um, the second paragraph on page one into the, and the, then the, the, the remainder of that paragraph on page two with everything redacted, else redacted. You're asking to enter it into evidence. Yes, we're, we'd like to enter it into evidence with those redactions. Your Honor, uh, two letters. Sure. Sure. Ms. Dombrowski, if you can take a look at the first page of that email, please, um, in the second paragraph. Well, first of all, who was Dr. Kipper? Uh, Dr. Kipper was the doctor that was helping my brother, um, excuse me, um, helping my brother get um, help from the, uh, the uh, pain medication addiction that he had. He was helping him with his drug addiction? The pain medication. And he, he, your brother was addicted to pain pills. He had been taking them for a long time, yes. Right. And, and you were instrumental in hiring Dr. Kipper to help your brother try to deal with that, right? Yes. Okay. And so Dr. Kipper, in his role as someone treating your brother, tried to, to keep you informed of what was going on with that treatment, right? Yes. And it was important to you as both his brother, or his, sorry, his sister and his manager that you be kept informed of that, right? It was important as his sister. Yeah. And well, and, and his, his issues with drugs were having an impact on his career as well too, right? No. And you knew that they were having an impact on his relationship with Amber, right? She, she's given plenty of testimony I'll about it. You knew that the drugs were having an impact on his relationship with Amber, right? I knew that Amber claimed certain things. But you didn't believe that they were? I didn't necessarily believe it, no. Okay. Um, we'll get to that in a few minutes. It, isn't it true that on the bottom paragraph on, uh, on page one that Dr. Kipper informed you that your brother was uncomfortable and pessimistic that he will ever be able to stop doing drugs? I'm not, I'm not asking if this I'll allow this question, but it's the only question on that point. Okay? Thank you. I'm sorry. Isn't it true that Dr. Kipper informed you in August of 2014 that your brother was uncomfortable and is pessimistic that he will ever be able to stop doing drugs? He, he does write this in this email, but this email is an update. I believe if I'm looking at the dates and I don't remember all dates, but I know that period and what's written in the email. I think this was during the time that they were where he was getting help from Dr. Kipper. Right, but th that's what he informed you of in your role as his manager and his sister about the status of Mr. Depp's belief that he would be able to stop doing drugs, right? Objection, I'll allow that question. I think he was informing me of the conversations, yes. 
And he also informed you that your, your brother didn't take accountability for his behaviors, correct? He does say in here that, he, yes, he, he wrote that he has no accountability for his behaviors in this time. And Heather, if you can go to the top of page two, please. In that first and second line, he also told you that your brother has fundamental issues with anger, right? Your Honor, objection to your side. No exception applied. All right. It's the same exception that applied to the other ones. This is what he informed her. We need to move on, though. Okay. We can. Heather, you can take that down. So you just testified, um, Ms. Dembrowski, that you understood from Amber that drugs and alcohol were impacting their relationship, but that you didn't necessarily believe that, right? Right. And you didn't necessarily share those concerns, right? Right. Did you have um, uh, an occasion to speak with Amber um, after a, a plane flight from Boston to Los Angeles in May of 2014? Objection to your side. I just asked if she spoke with her. I'm not asking just, what the content is. spoke. I'll overrule the objection at this time. I, I don't recall specific times speaking with Amber like that. Okay. Did you become... Um, did you become aware of an incident on a plane flight from Boston to Los Angeles in May of 2014? Objection, foundation. Foundation objection. If you, you I'll, she's I'll testified the, that she. I'll sustain the objection. It's foundation. If you can lay a foundation. Okay. Did, you, you, if something, if something happened in your brother's life that was notable, you, you wanted to know about it. You testified to that, right? Yes, sir. Uh, it's it's a foundation question. She's testified that she had insight into his daily life. I, I don't see it as a foundation question, so I'm going to sustain the objection if you want to. Okay. You, you, you were kept apprised of the goings on in Johnny's life, correct? For the most part, yes. Yeah, and you, and you, you testified yesterday you saw him just about every day, correct? When what I testified to yesterday saw him every day was when he was with the family of Vanessa. And you still saw him you, or were in touch with him fairly frequently as his business manager and as his sister when he was with Amber, correct? Less frequent. Okay, but still with, with some frequency, right? Yes. And if, if an event had happened that was potentially harmful to your brother, you would, you would want to know about that, right? Yes. Okay. And... All right, I'll sustain asked and answered. Next question. You, you, you made an effort to make yourself available to Ms. Hurd to talk to you about issues she was having with your brother, correct? I'm, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, I made an effort to talk to her anytime I felt she needed to speak. Somebody's trying to call us. <laughs> it's kind I, of a pleasant ringtone. I, well, I didn't answer it, so. <laughs> I don't know. Ms. Dombrowski, in addition to just Amber believing it, you believed that your brother needed help, didn't you? Objection, vague. Vague. You believe that your brother needed help with drugs and alcohol, overruled didn't you? The, overruled, overruled the objection. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I believed on the one medication I was concerned about. And you wanted your brother to get better from his addictions, right? I wanted to address the medication that he was on. And you understood that Amber wanted the same thing, wanted him to get better for both him and for her, correct? I'll sustain as to what Amber wanted. Um, now, uh, do you recall meeting with Ms. Hurd on May 25th, 2014? I don't recall. Um, 
Let's pull out the Exhibit 234, please. You said that was 234? 234, yes. Okay, thank you. The non-redacted version. Ms. Dombrowski, this is a multi-page exhibit that we can, um, we're not going to ask you about all the pages, but um, is this a text message chain between Amber and you on May 25th, 2014? Yes. And that those are your texts in gray on the left, right? Yes. And Ms. Hurd's texts in blue on the right? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, we have a, a, a version of this exhibit with Ms. Hurd's text redacted and the personal identifiers redacted um, that I'd like to ask the witness about um, and publish to the jury. I'm happy. Well, first, you want to admit it to evidence before you publish it to the cor jury. Correct. So right. So I'm just previewing that. Would you like me to go through the unredacted version with the witness first? No. Or? Well, well, if it's just her text, how does that, how is that probative if it's just her text? Because it's her text about what she, two things. One, it's her text about what she wanted for her brother. We'll get to those on page two. Um, it's, it's, I'm allowed to ask her about her her own words and what her feelings well, sort of You can brought. ask her about it, but it's not coming into evidence. Okay, well, okay. Okay. Ms. Dombrowski, did you reach out to Ms. Hurd on May 25th, 2014? Yes. Asking her if she wanted to talk? Yes. Why did you do that? I, I... Did you do that because you had been made aware of an issue about your brother's behavior on a flight earlier that day? I, I, the don't day before. I don't recall why I did that. You don't recall why you did that? No. Or you have no, no awareness or memory of a flight earlier that day or the day before? I don't recall all flights at, at all times. I don't have any specific memory of anything. Okay. Um, if you can turn to page two, Heather. If you can look at your third text down, Your Honor, or um, Ms. Dombrowski, you say to him, or to Ms. Hurd, you say to Ms. Hurd, I love him so much, but he needs help, and I don't have all the information to help alone. Do you see that? Objection, Your Honor. This is all hearsay. I'll allow that question. That's fine. I, I do see that. And what did you mean when you said he needs help? I don't recall the actual timing of it, but I wanted to help him with the that medication that he was on. That I know, um, and I know that um, I wanted to be able to be helpful in life because they were arguing all the time. And I believe you testified earlier that you didn't actually have concerns about your brother's dependence on drugs, right? No, I, I said that I, I did have about the, the medication. Just just the pain pills. It was the pain pills. Nothing else. I didn't have concern and So when you said he needs help, that's what you were referring to is that you you, you believe that your brother needed help with pills Objection, May I approach your honor all right
Heather, can you please pull up um, the, the pages ending in 934? Start with that, please. Actually, let's let's not let's let's go to um, nine three six. Just for the record, this is still in Exhibit two thirty four. It's just bait stamp page nine three six. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Dombrowski, do you see that the? the message that you sent to Amber three down where you said he is going to see the doctor in the morning with three exclamation points. Yes. Tell us, tell me what you remember about that. Uh, were you were referring to when you said he, you were referring to your brother, right? Yes. And by doctor, you meant an addiction doctor. Is that right? I, I believe I would have meant Dr. Kipper. Okay. And what was, it's, 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 you'd agree that it's fairly rare to get an appointment for a doctor the next day, right? I'll allow it. That's fine. I don't know that it's rare to get an appointment the next day. Well, Dr. Kipper wasn't an emergency room doctor, right? No. So what was so urgent about your brother's need to see a doctor that he was going to see Dr. Kipper the next morning when you texted this at 7.35 p.m.? I don't know that it was urgent. I think I was happy that he was going to see the doctor. And you were happy he was going to see the doctor because you thought he'd finally realized the problem that his drug addiction was having on himself and others, correct? That's why you were happy, right? I was happy he was going to see the doctor because I was concerned about the pain medication he was on. And you were concerned about what that pain medication did to your brother, right? Yes. You were concerned about the effect that that had on his life, right? I was concerned about him. And you were concerned about the effect that that drug addiction had on other relationships in his life as well, correct? Your Honor, ask and answer. I'm going through. That's fine, I'll not. You can answer. I didn't see anything that, that was happening necessarily in life to be concerned about others, me. Um, it was him I was concerned about. So you didn't see, your, your testimony today is that you didn't see any effect that your brother's drug problem was having on anyone else other than him. My concern was him. I wasn't focused on anything beyond that. Right. You weren't, you weren't concerned about the effect that it could be having on anyone else. Is that your testimony? Again, my concern was him. Can you pull up page 937, please? And when you sent Ms. Heard the text at the top of the page at 9.20 p.m. on May 25th, 2014, and you said, I just meant I will help in getting him help, what did that mean? It's help with Dr. Kipper, I believe. You, you were referring to getting your brother help for his drug addictions, correct? I was referring to getting him help with the medication that he was on. And if you go to page 938, please. When you told Amber at the bottom of that page at 10 30 10 26 p.m i think you need to tell him you are scared and you can't deal what did you mean by that i think you need to tell him you are scared and you can't deal what did you mean by that i'm asking her what she meant with one of her statements it's no different from the statement i just asked her about i'm just not sure what the prior inconsistent statement would be for this which was well that she's testified that all of amber's concerns were overblown okay
uh, drug abuse, you were concerned for your brother and your brother only. Is that right? I was concerned for my brother, yes. And only your brother. Is that right? That, my brother was my focus. Okay. Right. Now, you, as in your capacity as his personal manager, you were often apprised of your brother's performance on movie sets, right? Did you, did you have occasion to communicate with studios, for example, about movies that your brother was shooting? Yes. And studio executives would, could feel free to contact you about your brother's work? Yes, they mostly contacted the agent. Okay. And you were, who was the agent at the time? Is that Tracy, Tracy Jacobs? And that's the, the, your brother, Mr. Depp fired Ms. Jacobs in, in or around 2017. Is that right? I don't recall when. How long was Ms. Jacobs his agent? 20 something years. And he fired Ms. Jacobs at some point, right? Yes. After his divorce from Amber? I, I don't recall exactly when he fired her. Do you recall whether it was before or after he divorced Amber? I don't recall. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but in any event, you had frequent communications with Ms. Jacobs about your brother's work, correct? Excuse me. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and you, um, in the course, in, in your capacity as his, his manager, you, it came to your attention that he was late to movie sets, correct? You testified that you had contact with, frequent contact with Ms. Jacobs, his agent, right? Yes. And that contact included when he was shooting movies? Yes. And that contact included um, communications relating to his conduct on set? I'm laying the foundation. Well, it, it sounds like your foundation is going to be based on hearsay, which is what we're going to be getting to. Well, I'm. If, if you can lay a foundation if, without it being based on hearsay. Did, did you have personal knowledge of your brother being late to a set? Movie shoots. Was I, it, would that be if I was physically there? Is that what you're asking? Or? Your Honor, no, first I'd, I'd instruct, I'd ask you to instruct Mr. Chu not to shake his head, nod his head to the witness. That's inappropriate. All right. I'm, I'm not shaking. Okay. Well, he was. All right, well, I'll, I'll keep a lookout. Thank you. All right, thank you. Ms. Dombrowski, your brother told you himself that he was late to movie shoots, didn't he? Party admission. I'll allow that. I don't, I don't think he came to me and said I'm late to movie shoots, no. You learned from your brother that he was late to movie shoots, correct? I don't think he would have come to me to talk I'll, about I'll it. Allow no. it. You learned, so so you never had any communications with your brother about issues that he had being on time to movie sets. Is that your testimony? No. I, I'm, what I'm saying is, is I worked with him for years. You know, there was never a, a really a, a continuous topic of whether he was late to a movie set. Him and I having a conversation. He told you he had been late to movie sets, correct? Objection. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Can you pull please. up 348, please? If you can, can you blow it up so you just see the second email down, Heather? And that second email down is an email from you to Tracy Jacobs on February 27th, 2015, right? Objection, I allowed that question. Let's see where we go. The second, all the way down in here? The second one down from the top. Senate 1250. 
Yes, that's from me to Tracy. Okay. Now, in the second sentence of that email, you write, he told me one to one and a half hours, but not two. Yes, he was two and a half hours late one day and seven hours recently. Do you see that? I do see that. And when you said he told me, you're referring to your brother, Johnny Depp, admitting to you that he was late to movie sets, right? I, I, I don't know that I'm referring to him, no. Okay. Uh, in any event, it was a problem. As, as personal manager, you knew that it was a problem for the studios if he showed up late to set, right? I knew that on this particular film, there were times when he was late to set. You did know on this particular film? On this particular film. And this was this particular film is Pirates 5, correct? Yes. Pirates of the Caribbean 5? And he was filming that in Australia, right? Yes. And this email was sent on February 27th, 2015, right? Yes. Okay. So you knew that as he was filming Pirates of the Caribbean 5 on, in 2015, early 2015, that he had problems being late to the set, right? I, I wouldn't call it problems being late to set, but he was occasionally late to set. Okay. Uh, late enough that Disney executives called you to discuss that, right? All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. And you knew that this wasn't the only movie that he had been late to set for, correct? She testified about her close involvement in his personal affairs when he was shooting movies. If you, if you lay a foundation, not based on hearsay. Well, have you, you talked to your brother when he was filming each of the movies that he filmed, right? Yes. Okay. And with respect to Pirates 5, he told you that he had been late to the set, right? No, I don't recall him telling me he was late to set. Okay, so despite the fact that you said he told me, you don't recall whether that was him or not. I, I don't know that that, I don't know that the he in that refers to him. Okay. You, you were also, I believe you testified yesterday that you were closely involved in, um, in the financial aspects of your brother's life, right? I was, I was closely involved in speaking with the representatives, but I wasn't really closely involved in, you know, his financial world. I had, that wasn't my thing. And your brother's, the income that he made from movies or other commercial opportunities that he had, that funded both him and, and it flowed, or it came in through his companies, right? And then... The money that your brother made came in through his companies, correct? Um, I don't really understand your question. Well, you're the president of one of those companies, Infinitum Nile, right? Yes. So if your brother signs a movie contract, the money, is it paid directly to him or does it come in through, through a company that he owns? Infinitum Nile is completely a, a separate entity. So how he gets paid is that's the business manager's. Okay, you, you were involved with um, discussions of opportunities that he had to shoot movies, correct? Sometimes, yes. Okay. And you were um, in close contact with others on Mr. Depp's team about opportunities that arose, right? Yes. Okay, including Tracy Jacobs? Yes. His agent? Yes. In, including, um, you, in fact, you would be in contact with studios directly as well. It's from time to time, right? Yes. And Mr. Jacobs, um, well, strike that. In your capacity as his, as his personal manager, you became aware of financial distress that your brother was in, correct? Because you. You were familiar with his financial affairs, right? I was somewhat familiar. That was that was the other representative's area. Okay. Did you have occasion to become familiar with whether he was undergoing financial distress such that he needed to get movies, a certain number of movies a year? I 
Tracy had a certain number, excuse me, a certain number of movies per year that she wanted him to do. And the certain number of movies a year, to, to your understanding, the certain number of movies a year that your brother had to do was necessary to stave off financial distress, correct? The certain number of movies per year, would, Tracy would push for a certain number of movies per year because it was, a, it was beneficial to her. That, that's the only reason she pushed for a certain number oh, of movies a year? That's the main reason Tracy would push for a certain number of movies per year, yes. It, not, not because it was beneficial to Mr. Depp? If it was beneficial to Mr. Depp, then it was going to be beneficial to Tracy. Okay, but just because it was beneficial to Tracy doesn't mean it wasn't beneficial to Mr. Depp or his companies, objection. correct? I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Now, at some point, you became aware when he was filming Pirates 5 in Australia, you be became aware of an injury that he suffered to his finger, right? Yes. Okay. And you were involved in trying to cover up how it happened, correct? Objection and lack of foundation. I I'll allow the question. I'm not sure I understand the question. You were involved in helping to cover up how the finger injury happened, right? I, I, I don't understand cover up. You, you, were, you were involved in making sure that people on Mr. Depp's team didn't say how he hurt his hand, correct? I'll allow it if she can answer it. You can answer. Um, we certainly didn't want um, any press to know about it. So that's, you know, to keep it from that. Um, and, and because you didn't want any press to know about his finger injury, you told Mr. Depp's personal assistant to make sure that he wasn't to say that he wasn't sure how Mr. Depp hurt his hand, correct? You instructed him to say that. If it was someone that I would be concerned that the word would get out to the press, I, I would have done that. So it was, it was okay to you to tell people to lie to protect your brother, right? It, it wasn't necessarily a lie. I didn't know how he hurt his finger myself at the time because I, I I'm pretty sure I know the time frame you're talking about is when it first happened and you have no personal knowledge to this day of how he hurt his finger correct because you weren't there I wasn't there Heather can you pull up exhibit 210 redacted please your honor this is um, the exhibit we discussed yesterday um, if the court and Mr. Chu agrees with the redactions, I'd just like to publish it to the jury uh, and admit it into evidence. Well, if it's two tenants already in, in evidence. That's the one you gave uh, it, this morning, correct? No, that's a different one. Yeah, I think that was 214. That was 214. I'm sorry. I got it backwards. This is 210. And I believe that this Follows. is this, it's just one page. Or it's two, it's two pages, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's these two pages that we talked about yesterday. Right. Reserving your objections, are the redactions correct? Uh, the redactions are correct. We reserve our redactions. Okay, that's fine. Say, I will enter a 214 into evidence uh, over, over objections. Permission to publish, Your Honor? All right, yes, sir. Thank you. Can you blow that up, please? So, Ms. Dombrowski, we discussed this a little bit yesterday. Um, this is the text exchange between you and Ms. Hurd on February 3rd, 2014, where Ms. Hurd says, J.D. is on a bender, and your, your response is, where are the kids, correct? Yes. Can you just scroll down, please? 
Let's go to the next page, please. Let's scroll down to the bottom, please. And then you text Amber, worry about everything. Is that right? I, I wrote the words, worry about everything. It was myself. I was speaking about myself. And you tell her, I don't love any of it, correct? Right. And, and right. to, to stay, we, we did go through this yesterday, but go ahead. And, and two days later is when you sent your brother the text messages that said, stop booze, stop Coke, stop pills, correct? I'm not looking at it. I don't recall the timing of it. Nothing further. Thank you. All right. Redirect. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Timbrowski. Good morning. During Mr. Rottenborn's examination yesterday and again this morning, uh, he spent a lot of time talking to you about your brother's alleged drug and alcohol abuse. Do you remember that? Yes. You're not denying that Mr. Depp ever used alcohol or drugs, are you? Objection leading. It's redirect, Your Honor. That's still leading. Um, I'll sustain this leading if you want to rephrase your question. You also testified uh, several times in response to Mr. Rottenborn's questions that Ms. Heard tends to say things in a more dramatic manner. Do you recall that testimony? Yes. Why did you say that? I've had my own interaction one-on-one -on -one with Ms. Heard, so I know, I know a bit about her personality. Um, she would, she, you know, she would present information to me um, that was not necessarily information that was supported by everybody else that was around. And, and I've spent a lot of years working with my brother. We have a close team. We've, you know, it's, it's a many years of trusted people helping, you know, uh, make sure that everything in life, it, it works out and goes smoothly. Um, but all those people where I would have a daily contact, you know, whether it's about scheduling or just how the day is going for all the years, those people never said the same thing. Objection hearsay, Your Honor. I think it was responsive to the question. Well, I'll, I'll sustain the last, se the last sentence. I, I, yeah, yeah, I, I, just, Honor, just the last sentence of it, that's all. Un understood, Your okay. Honor. I think it could, as well. I think it goes to state of mind rather than the, the right. truth. I just did the last sentence. I'll sustain just the last sentence. Thank you, right the last sentence, okay? And do you recall your testimony yesterday when you stated that after the phenomenal success of Pirates 1, one of the changes to Mr. Depp's, your brother's personal life, was that there were a lot more people around him after that. Do you recall yes. that? Yes, yes. When Johnny and Miss Heard became involved in a relationship several years later, were there still several people, were there still a lot of people around them, your brother, on a regular basis? Yes. Who were those people? He had, he had assistants, he had security, he had, you know, property managers, people that helped at the house. There, he had a quite a few people that were around all the time. How often did you communicate with those people? Um, I communicated daily, not necessarily with each one of those people, but I communicated pretty much daily with people within the, the world, the circle. Did any of those people ever raise the same concerns that Ms. Heard did? Objection hearsay. All right. Again, it goes to state of mind. I'll sustain the objection as to hearsay. Next question. What, if any, concerns were expressed about Johnny's behavior when using alcohol? Objection, hearsay. All right. Again, it goes to state of mind. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. 
Thank you, Your Honor. That's all I have. All right. Is this witness subject to recall? I do not believe so, Your Honor. She's subject to recall? No. Yeah, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Broski, you're free to go, or you can stay in the courtroom. It's up to you, okay? Thank you. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, Mr. Broski. All right. Your next witness. Good morning, ma'am. Isaac Peruch. All right. We'll get him. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. While we're waiting for him, can you spell his last name for the court reporter for me? Yes. Uh, B A R U C H. Thank you. Hey, there's a thing here, transcript thing. You can just keep it there, sir. Have a seat. Okay. Put the microphone in the, uh, close to you, please. Thank you. Good morning. Morning. Would you state your name for the record, please? Uh, my name is Isaac Baruch. I-S-A-A-C-B-A-R-U-C-H. Mr. Baruch, where do you currently live? I live in Los Angeles. Do you know the plaintiff in this case, Johnny Depp? Yes. How do you know Mr. Depp? I know him from, since teenagers. Uh, we met in Florida. And could you tell the jury a little bit about your experience meeting Mr. Depp when you were teenagers in Florida? Yeah, uh, we were both playing in bands. We had mutual friends. And uh, that we met in probably 1980. And... Uh, yeah, we hit it off, we got along with each other. And uh, yeah. That's... How often did you see Mr. Depp when you were teenagers together in Florida? A few times, uh, a, few times uh, a month, I'd say it could be more, a little more or whatever, because you know, we'd see each other at parties and clubs, nightclubs where the bands played. Yeah, like that. And for how long were you both um, living in Florida and seeing each other somewhat regularly? Well, we, we met in like 1980, so, uh, and then we both moved away. He moved to California, I moved to New York. What was that, 80, from 80 to 83, that, what's that, like four years? What were your impressions of Mr. Depp while you were um, both living in Florida at the same time? Oh, he's a, he's a sweet kid. <laughs> A oh, sweet guy. Sir, sir, wait, there's an objection. Oh. Thank you. What his impressions were back then? Or what's the relevance? Just to... establishing the background and the All relationship, right. Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. Next question, please. All right. Um, Mr. Bruch, did there come a time when Mr. Depp uh, moved away from Florida? Yeah, yeah. And where did he move to, if you know? Like I said before, he moved to California. At some point in time, did you also move to California? Yeah. And did you um, reconnect with Mr. Depp when you got there? Yeah. Around what time was that? Pro sometime during the first year. And uh, then afterwards, after the first year, uh, more and stuff. Yeah. About what year would you say that was? Oh, I moved to California in uh, September of uh, 85. 
And did you know um, if Mr. Depp was working when you arrived in California in, in 1985? Well, I knew, I knew he was pursuing acting at that time. Yeah, I, 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 he's looking for work because he's pursuing acting. I, How often did you see uh, Mr. Depp when you first moved to California? Well, like I said, the first year, a few times. Afterwards, I had a friend who, uh, whose girlfriend uh, lived in the same building as Johnny. And that, so then hanging out over there, I ended up seeing Johnny more often. And plus, my friend who, I, who I'm talking about, who, whose girlfriend lived in the same building, he was playing in a band and they needed another guitar player, and Johnny ended up joining the band, so we were hanging out a lot more often. Um, what were you doing when you moved out to California? I was pursuing music also, working retail jobs and trying to get a band, make a band, you know? Did there come a time when you began working for Mr. Depp? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When was that? Oh, that's later on. That's like in 1993. What were you doing for Mr. Depp when you started working for him in 1993? Well, he owned a place called the Viper Room, and uh, which is a music venue, a nightclub, bar, and bands play. And uh, it was already open for six months. And uh, the girl who was working, uh, the person who was working, the, as office manager, didn't want to work there anymore. So the guy who was running the place for Johnny, who was a, a friend named Sal Jenko, another Florida friend from back in 1980, when we all first meet, he calls me up and he says, hey, Isaac, do you want to Did work this job? Say, I don't think it's offered for the I truth of the matter. Or, I mean, that, can we that's fine. I'll, I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. At some point in time, did you stop working at the Viper Room for Mr. Depp? Oh, yeah. When was that? Well, I worked from 93 to 98. In 98, I moved away. Did you return to L.A. again at some point? Yes, I did. When was that? I moved back uh, December of 2002. What did you do um, for work when you returned to L.A.? Well, I, for two weeks, I worked at an art gallery, and then I uh, went back to the Viper Room on New Year's Eve. How long were you working at the Viper Room at that point in time? It was another year, and then the place changed hands. Were you working um, on anything else while you were working at the Viper Room in that time frame? Yeah, I, I was work uh, sidewise. I was teaching myself art. And what steps were you taking to teach yourself art at that time? Books, learning how to draw and uh, paint, and uh, taking community uh, college classes. At some point in time, did you uh, begin pursuing art at a, on a full-time mm -hmm. scale? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did that come about? Well, I was working at, working at the Viper Room, taking classes, and then at, uh, uh, at one point, the club changed hands completely after a year, 2004. And I was given a choice of either keep working for these new owners or uh, Johnny out of his pocket was gonna give a severance pay to whoever didn't wanna work there uh, anymore. So I took the severance pay and then it helped me continue on to, to finish community classes, private classes, and then be able to transfer to uh, Cal State University. And did you get a degree from Cal State University? Yes, I did. What degree was that? BFA. What year? 2010. Um, after you received your BFA, did you continue to pursue art full-time? Yeah. Did Mr. Depp ever express an interest in your art? Yeah. When was the first time that happened? Well, first time you saw a painting in 2008. And then the next time was 20, uh, 2012. Uh, I had uh, made a painting and sent it to my best friend uh, uh, email uh, in an email. And uh, he forwarded it to Johnny. And Johnny emailed back saying, hey, when Isaac wants to sell that, uh, whenever he wants to sell that, to go ahead and 
get in touch with me because I want to buy it. Did Mr. Depp ever buy that painting? No. Why not? Because when I brought over paintings, I, I had moved back to uh, California and I, w I brought over a bunch of paintings for him to look at and see if he wants any. To buy, buy any, and he looked at me and says, I got an idea. How about I be your patron? And we put together an art show, make, some, make, make a body of work, and then we'll, I'll throw a party and invite people, and I'll sell the stuff for you, and you could keep all the money. So he didn't, he didn't buy any paintings there. Instead, he offered me a complete patronship. So what did you understand he meant by um, becoming your patron? Well, he was going to financially make it possible for me to just paint every day and put together a body of work so that way then it could be sold. How did he plan to do that? Objection to what he planned on doing. What did you understand he planned to do to, well, to could, make that possible for you? I could tell you, I could tell you that uh, it, it what it included was that the next day I ended up moving into he 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 uh, I, I moved into a, a art studio penthouse at the Eastern Columbia building. It was listen, I got a place for you to go ahead and li uh, live and work and put the, this body of of art together, and uh, I'll take care of you. You don't have to worry about anything. And what was the place where you were going to live that Mr. Depp offered you? The Eastern Columbia building. Did you, um, did you take him up on that offer to live at the Eastern Columbia building? Yeah, of course. <laughs> and uh, how did that make you feel? I started crying. Is you know, one day, you, one day you're in your mother's garage selling paintings for $100, $200, $300 on eBay. Next thing you know, you, you, it's an art show and like, you don't have to worry about Deadly Squad? Of course, of course. Uh, I, was, I was flipping out. When did you move into the Eastern Columbia building? The next day after we met and we talked. The next day, the next day I get, I get a phone call from a guy named Kevin Murphy who is working for Johnny and I go to, and he says, hey, meet me at this address. And I go to, and I meet him and here I am in front of this building. This is a beautiful building. This is like, you know, it's whatever, 13 floors, but it's like from the 1930s, some Art Deco, beautiful building. And I'm looking, I'll go, all right, this is unreal. What, there's gonna be, you know, all right, it's gonna be one of these apartments or whatever, one of these places here. I go in with uh, Kevin Murphy. He takes me all the way up to the roof. We go, we go to, uh, into penthouse two, and this, I walk in and I'm like crying, going, "This is a, it's beautiful. This is like a, a mansion uh, situation to me." Mr. Birch, how long did you end up living at the Eastern Columbia Building? Three years and seven months. Um, Your Honor, I'd like to show the witness plaintiff's exhibit one sixteen. All right, one sixteen. Am I looking at something? You will in a second, sir. It's not on the screen.
I'm just going to pull up a paper copy for a moment. We can see it, but he can't see it. We'll just use a paper copy. We'll get this resolved at lunchtime. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Bruch, do you recognize the document um, that you're looking at that's been marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 116? Yeah. What, and what is it? This is uh, the floor plan of the roof, uh, all the penthouses up on, uh, on the roof at uh, the Eastern Columbia. And that's the building where you lived um, starting in uh, March 2013, is that right? I moved in the first week of uh, March uh, 2013, yeah. Your Honor, at this time I'd like to move into um, evidence, Plaintiff's Exhibit 116, please. No objection, Your Honor. All right, 116 in evidence, you can publish to the jury. Is it, I'm sorry, Your Honor, I just want to be sure that- Yeah, they, they, they can don't. see it in the gallery, see okay. it. we'll just have to work on that. That's right. great, thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Bruch, can you um, describe for the jury what um, is depicted here in Exhibit 116? Uh, yeah, that, uh, so the right side of this uh, graph is, uh, there's a pool there, there's, a, uh, there's uh, another uh, top of another apartment that actually starts on the floor below, it's a two-story apartment. Um, but there's a pool there, and there's a, a, a gym, workout room. And the left side, there's a, at the bottom, there's an X, and that's uh, the elevator. And so you walk out of the elevator, you make a little uh, left, and there's part of Penthouse 5 right there, straight ahead. And then you keep walking straight, and then you make a left, a sharp left, and the actual penthouse five is straight ahead. And then you hang a right, and you walk, start walking up that way. On your right is gonna be penthouse one. On your left is gonna be penthouse four. When you get to the end of that corridor, this is the door for penthouse three. And if you hang a right, oh look, there it is, it came up on the screen. <laughs> and if you hang a right, and you go down to the end, is the door to penthouse two. That's the apartment that I lived in. And who did you understand owned these penthouses? Oh, Johnny owned them all. Which one did you live in? Penthouse two. Was anyone else living um, in the penthouses at the time that you moved in in March 2013? No, I was the first one to move in. I moved in the first week of March, and then a couple of weeks later, two, three weeks later, then Johnny and Amber moved in, and then after that, the next one to move in is Rocky, Raquel Pennington, Amber's uh, friend, and then at some point her sister moved in, Whitney, and uh, also, uh, at some point, uh, Rocky's uh, boyfriend moved in with her in penthouse one. So I believe you just testified that uh, Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard moved in uh, shortly after you moved in, is that right? Yes. And which penthouse did they move into? Penthouse three. And then you testified, I believe, that um, oh, someone named Rocky Pennington moved in? Yes. Who was Rocky Pennington? Amber Heard's friend from Texas, and I, I think they made, I don't know, I'm not sure if they told me that they moved out there together or something like that, but um, yeah, her friend. And later you said that um, her boyfriend moved in with her. What was his name? Josh, Josh Drew. And which unit did they live in? Penthouse one. And I believe you also testified that um, Whitney moved in. Who was Whitney? Whitney uh, Heard. Uh, she's married, so she's got a different last name. I'm not sure what it is. But uh, 
Amber's sister, Whitney. And which of the units did um, Ms. Heard's sister li live in? Four. Um, can you tell the jury a little bit about your relationships um, with Ms. Heard, um, Ms. Pennington, Mr. Drew, um, and uh, Ms. Heard, um, sister? Oh, yeah, I, I was friends with all of them. I loved them all. They all treated me with respect. Was, we had, it was great. Uh, you know, I'm an old time friend of Johnny's living, living there and we we're all looking out for each other. We became great friends. I fell in love with the, all of them. When you moved in um, to Penthouse 2, you were working on an art show with Mr. Depp, right? Yeah, that that's the entire reason that I'm there is to to, the, to uh, uh, work and put together this art show. Did you have a time frame that you expected to be able to put on that art show? At first, when we first powwowed this idea, when you know, uh, it's it, we talked about all right, what do we do? You know, what's what's this show going to be? What how many paintings? Is it, is it going to be? And we came up with a number. Okay, so there's going to be a certain body of work. I'm not, I'm not a known person. I'm just some schnook painter. It's, so there's, and if I was a famous painter, I could make five paintings and, and the room will fill up. But so we decided, okay, like 25 pieces of work, large scale. And, I, and Johnny says, hey, what, how long do you think this will take? I said, I've never done it before. I don't know, maybe a few months. And were you able to comp complete the paintings in the in a few months? No, it's it's after. It took me to, to in order to make two large scale paintings. It took me like to almost two months, and I'm I'm start freaking out. Going, uh, I'm only got two paintings, and all right, I got to do twenty five. I said a few months. So I ended up going to Johnny's place and, and saying, hey, look, dude, this is going to take a lot longer than a, 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 a few months. I, don't, I could only make two paintings. And how did Mr. Depp react? He looks at me and he starts laughing and he says, Ike, don't worry. I do not care. I just want you to paint however long it takes. Just I want you to paint every day. During the course of the time that you were living at the Eastern Columbia building, um, did Mr. Depp ever give you any money? Yeah. How much did he give you? Over a period of four years the, of the patronship, I, ca I ballpark calculated probably around 100000 And how, how did you come up with that amount? Well, from the first from the first get go, when I said, hey, look, I need dough, to, you know, to buy stuff and, and, and to, you know, do this. He, I ended up getting an envelope the next day with five thousand dollars in it, and then I budgeted it and and stretched it out, and you know, and so every few months I I get an envelope. It could have been that I didn't know if it was going to be the same amount, but it ended up being the same amount, which was wow. Uh, so basically, around five grand every few months. So in a year, it's 20 grand. But then also, there was a period, uh, maybe a, a year or two, might have been that it was five times I had to ask for, for dough, or it was four. And then on top of it, so, so right there, that could be 80 grand or 90 grand. And then on top of that, I ended up uh, uh, getting a herniated disc. He sent me to the doctors to get an MRI and, and see the doctor get an MRI. And it, there was 10 weeks of, of uh, therapy that he covered. So I throw that in there too. And I ended up coming up with the figure of 100, 100 grand. Could be a little less, could be a little more. What was your understanding of whether Mr. Depp intended to be paid back for the oh. money that he provided to you? There's no, it's, he, that's not even the thought of being paid back. This is something that he wanted to see happen. This is something he he invested in. To, to, to he knew it was, he had to he was going to spend money to make it happen for me to survive and paint 
and create this thing that he wanted to see because he liked the art. And so there was, and there was no payback. And the, the whole thing was about him selling the art so that way I for, so that way I keep all the money. He didn't expect anything. It was he was doing this as a friend, as he's done with many other friends. All right, I'll sustain the last sentence of his his, his and statement. Could explain to the jury that strike didn't mean anything. Right, we we've, we've done that, but that's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Bruch, did there come a time when you um, decided that you planned to pay Mr. Depp back? Oh, yeah. That, f for me, when, uh, when he, he, he's, he, he's told me he had a money situation going on, for me, it was like, this guy just changed. He's been, he's been uh, making it possible for me to live and work and, 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 and make product. And that, and and I'm uh, by that expense, I'm part of the problem. It's like, wh how do I help him? How how can I help him? I mean, he's sharing his sandwich with me, you know. It's like if I how, how do I sh how do I share that my half my sandwich with him? Give him that half to make something up. That's it's you you don't you don't not do anything. And said, the only thing I got is paintings. So I, I stood up when he, he's, he's telling me what he's telling me about his money situation. And for me, I said, hey, it's, this is, if these things ever sell, we got to split this 50-50 and I ain't taking no for an answer, something. I got to add, I got to put something into this. So uh, as the, for me, I looked at it like he's got it. He has to get something back. Mr. Bruch, during your time living at the Eastern Columbia building, did you develop a relationship uh, with the defendant in this case, Ms. Hurd? Yeah. And did you get along with Ms. Hurd? I loved her. I fell in love with her just like Johnny fell in love with her. I fell in love with her. She's uh, uh, totally respectful, gracious to me. Uh, that she's got great teeth, uh, that she treated me with complete respect. Anytime I walk into the, she's at the humor wise, total uh, locker, uh, locker room humor, demented humor, totally laughed at, you know, the jokes, uh, made the jokes, totally got along with her. Every time I walked into their place, Isaac, you want something to eat? Isaac, you want something to drink? Every time. There's only one time I remember that she didn't offer because I walked in and she's in the kitchen at the counter and she's doing a beauty facial mask and uh, so she can't offer me. And I'm going, hey, is that something that can help me? And she looked at me and she goes, no. And that, and I'm laughing and then she laughed after because she didn't realize she was making a joke. So, um, yeah, Mr. I Bruch, loved her. Mr. Bruch, did Ms. Hurd ever visit you in your penthouse? Yeah. Do you recall the first time that she visited you there? Yes. When was that? The first time is that uh, it's in March when they moved in. And they were there for a, a, a couple of days and I didn't even know. And Johnny had called me, says, hey, come over, meet my girl. And that, and then the, and so I did. And then the next day, they came over to my place uh, for the first time to see how I had set up the art studio, the uh, lights, and, you know, just what's my painting set up and stuff, and to look at other paintings. And they walked in, and I remember the first thing she said was, I hope we didn't keep you up last night because of all the yelling. And I I looked at her and I says, no, these walls are like three feet thick. I don't hear deadly squad. How did she seem when she said that to you? Well, she's is it semi joking and inquisitive, you know, like they did, you know, to find out. Um, in your three and a half years living at the Eastern Columbia building, did you have opportunities to observe Mr. Depp's and Miss Hurd's uh, relationship? Yeah. Can you describe uh, what you observed about their relationship? They were always loving with each other. They treated each other like gold. You know, 
kissing and and you know can what can I get you type of thing you know being kind with each other always loving always a loving situation how often would you say you interacted with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd if they were there because they're traveling they're doing they're working and doing stuff if they were there I saw them maybe two three times a week could maybe uh, uh, there might be one time one time a week that I see them that I go over to hang out or you know see them or they might come or Johnny might come over to visit or you know like that. Since you've known them, um, did you ever see them get physically violent with each other? Never. Did you ever see them argue? Yes. How how many times? Probably like twice. Um, can you describe the arguments that you witnessed? The first argument that I remember was uh, walking in. Uh, there was a it was a telephone argument. Johnny's at the kitchen table and he's argue he's 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 screaming about something, and on the other line because it's on speaker and he's talking with the phone at at the phone. Uh, the other person is, is Amber and that she's in New York and he's, uh, at the kitchen table and, uh, they're arguing and he's going, who is it? Who is it? And she's saying, oh, baby, come on, please don't, what are you doing, baby? Why are you being like this, baby? And this went on for a little while and I'm listening and then he hangs up. She calls back again. And it's the same thing. Who is it? What's going on? Who is it? And she's she's saying, "Oh, come on, baby, don't be. What are you What are you doing, baby?" And and then hang up the phone again. The third time it happens, I'm saying, "This what, there's no solution in this conversation." I grab the phone from him and I says, "Hey, Amber, this is Isaac. Listen, this conversation is now over." And I hung up the phone. And. She didn't call back again, and he went to the couch and went to bed. I believe you said you saw them argue twice. Was there another time that you saw them argue? Uh, I ended up uh, going over, and there's at the kitchen table is Johnny, is Amber, is uh, Rocky, and Josh. And they're pa and I'm going, what are you guys doing? And they're hanging out and they're power, p trying to plot a f to figure out a way how to get rid of Whitney to not live there anymore. And I felt bad. I like Whitney. So, was, you know, oh, well, you know, that's that's going to be a drag. And, uh, I was, I was, you know, what are you plotting? You know, how do you figure out? Hey, lend your sister some dough and let her move out. But, you know, they're trying to figure something out something differently or whatever. At one point, so uh, there was a point, Johnny got completely, uh, you know, flustered and, uh, and frustrated, and he got up and he walks away, and as he's walking away, he says, figure it out. And that was it. That was the whole thing. I don't know if you want to call it, I don't think you uh, might, might call that an argument, but uh, Your Honor, I'm about to um, switch gears a little bit. It might okay. be a good time for a mid-morning break. Perfect. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and uh, have you take your morning recess for 15 minutes, okay? Just remember to not talk to anybody and do not do any outside research, okay? And we'll see you back here in 15 minutes. Do I stand? You, can, you can stay right here. That's fine. You don't have to stand. Thank you. So I just want to remind you, since you're still on the stand under oath, you can't talk to any of the attorneys or Mr. Hurt at this time until your testimony is done, okay? Okay. All right, and we'll be back, and we'll be back at 11.45, okay? All I right. got to stay here the yeah, whole time? Yeah, you have to stay the whole time. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay.
can stay. Yes, ma'am. Your next question. Mr. Baruch, were We're you still... back. (laughs) Okay. Thank you for coming back. Yes. Um, Were you still living in Penthouse 2 of the Eastern Columbia Building on May 21st, 2016? Yes. Yes. Do you recall what you were doing that evening? Yes. What were you doing? I was out. It was evening time. I'm out in the neighborhood, and I'm on my way home. I get a phone call from my friend to, uh, who wants to know if I want to go out and eat. I said I just ate, but uh, I'm five minutes away from from the Eastern Columbia building home, and that uh, go across the street, get something to eat, and uh, bring it up for takeout, and we'll go upstairs to my joint and we'll eat. And yeah. Did you meet your friend back at the Eastern Columbia building? Yeah. Around what time was that? Nine thirty. What happened after you met your friend? We went upstairs. Uh, can we pull up um, Plaintiff's Exhibit 116 again, please? And Your Honor, given that this has already been admitted, I'd ask that it be published. All right, that's fine. You can publish it. You just can't see it. Okay, he still has it. Mr. Bridge, is it on the screen in front of you? Yeah. Yes. Mr. Bridge, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about what happened after you went upstairs that evening. Um, And it may be helpful for you. There are controls on that screen um, that you can use to sort of mark the exhibit to show the jury the the spots that you're talking about and and identifying. So if you you just touch it, it'll it'll make a mark. So you don't have to touch the top. That's fine. Do I touch something on menu here? No, you don't. No, just wait and you can touch it whenever she needs you to to mark it. Just wherever I touch it, it's going to make a mark. It will. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Burge, when you um, got upstairs that evening with your friend around 930, um, what did you see? We got out of the elevator and, you know, just like in the graph, you, you make a left and then you turn the corner. When we walked out, I noticed on the floor there's uh, shards of glass, there's pieces of glass. And so, you know, just looking, going, oh, something busted. It could be one of the sconces or something like that. And kept walking. Can you mark on the exhibit where you saw the broken glass that evening? Yeah. Right there. Right where you could go left. Or you could go right, and if you wanted to go to the pool area, that's you could. There's an exit that way, so you could either go right or you go left. You go left, you're in the apartment, going in the hallway through the apartment, or you go right, right there in that spot. And did you continue on to your penthouse after you saw the broken glass? Oh yeah. So we walk, walk around, and then we make the turn. We hang the right past the penthouse five. And we stop right in front of, right here. What, and why did you stop right there? Oh, stopped in front of here, pen, penthouse one, which is more, it's more, right there, because there's this puddle of wine, huge puddle of wine on the floor that's in front of the door, and there's a wine, uh, the splashed wine that's dripping down the wall. And so we stopped, and I'm looking at it and going, look at this. These, someone must have got hammered. These guys probably had a party. And, and at that point, right then, as soon as I said that, the door opens up. And it's Josh Drew, who pokes his head out the door, only enough for his head to come out. And he's pretty bug-eyed and looks distraught. And I look at him and I go, what's up with the spilt wine? And I figure and I get an explanation or whatever. 
And uh, he says, he looked at me and just said, rough day, had a rough day. And at that point, I got concerned and said to him, because I'm friends with, with him, you know, I got concerned. I said, hey, you okay? You want me to help you with something? Do you need help? He said, no, it's okay. We got it. And I said, okay. And I, me and my buddy took off and went into my place. And what did you do after that? Keep my buddy ate. Uh, I believe he had pizza from across the street. And uh, we talked. We yapped for a while and, you know, could, could be, I could yap. So it could, you know, it could take, we were there probably an hour and change or something like that. And then, uh, he's, you know, we're done. So it's, I walked, I walked him out and walked down, went to the elevator, walked out, went to the elevator. We went downstairs. I walked him out the door, finished the, to finish the conversation that we were having. And I said, all right, see ya. And then I went back in, I went upstairs and I went to bed. Around what time was that that you went back into the Eastern Columbia building? You know something, it's, it's, if we got there at like around 9.30 and we were talking, I don't know, an hour, two, an hour and a half, two hours, you know, somewhere around 11 o'clock, I would think. We can go ahead and take um, Exhibit 116 down. Mr. Baruch, can you um, describe for the jury the events of the next day, May 22nd, 2016? Yes. It's my birthday. May 22nd is my birthday. I wake up. I end up uh, texting Johnny and saying, hey, I'm going to be in town because he's not staying at the, at the Eastern Columbia building. He's staying in a house in, in town. Okay. And uh, so I texted him, it's my birthday. I said, listen, I'm gonna be in town. Uh, I'm gonna come by and to, uh, to have a birthday drink. Okay. I didn't t hear from him, you know, I didn't get an answer back, but I said, that's what I'm doing. If that happens, that happens. But, so it was uh, around t uh, noon, noon time, uh, that I, so I left. I walked out of my apartment and I go through the hallway, as you see the graph. I go through the hallway and I turn the corner from Penthouse Street. And uh, as I'm walking down, well, who do I see? I see a group of people. It's a guy in black clothes, uh, a, a black shirt, black pants, Amber Heard. And I see Josh Drew who's leaning up against the door, and the door is open. This door is open, something's going on, and as I'm walking up, I'm saying, hey, what's up, what are you guys doing? And then Amber turns to me as I'm walking up. Amber turns to me, and she says, uh, Johnny came by last night, he got violent, so I'm changing the locks on one, three, and five. And I'm looking at her, and, and she goes, oh, and don't worry about two, you're okay. And at this point, I'm now walking past. So now we're all in front of this, of the open door of the apartment. And I see there's two guys, two locksmiths working on the door. So now I'm standing on one side and you, uh, you have Josh Drew on one side of the door. You got the two locksmiths with the door open, working on it. Sunlight's, the, the sun's coming through the door sunlight from windows and then amber is in is in front of me and there's the security guy and and that with two feet away from each other talking and she introduces me as she as she's finishing saying uh, oh don't worry about your uh your apartment she says oh and this is a security guard that i got that who's going to be hanging around and she and i got introduced she introduced me to him and I shook his hand. He gave me a card, which I lost. And, uh, and that, and I'm kind of taking this in and going, and I said, wait, what, what happened? What's, what's going on? 
And uh, at that point, Josh Drew looks at me and gives me the high sign to like, hey, I'll, you know, follow me. I'll, uh, I'll tell you in private. And Mr. Uh, Rich, when you were speaking with Ms. Hurd, how close were you standing to her? Like I said, two, I'm two feet, a foot and a half, two feet away. We're all two feet. And how was the lighting in that area? There's lights in the hallway, but we're standing in, and we're standing in an open doorway that the wall this, uh, is all windows. Sunlight's coming through and it's, it's, you can operate in this light. There's that much light. Did you notice any marks on her face when you were speaking with her? No. Did you see any bruises? No. Did you see any redness? No. Did you notice any swelling? No. Did it look like Ms. Hurd was wearing any makeup? No. Had you seen her wearing makeup before? Yeah. And you had seen her not wearing makeup before? Yeah, I've seen, like I said, with fate doing with the face mask, doing a face mask, no makeup, hanging around, the, uh, waking up in the morning, uh, no uh, uh, with makeup, glammed out to go out. And it's, it's, it's three and a half years of seeing her in different uh, different forms. Did you speak with Mr. Drew about anything at that point? Well, yeah. After I said that, uh, uh, hey what's going on and he gave me the high sign to like hey follow him we went into my apartment and had a conversation and what happened um after you had that conversation with mr drew we left the apartment and we we go walking back uh towards uh, penthouse one and as i'm walking back I'm, i say to amber as i'm walking up he hit you and she goes yeah, he threw a phone at me and hit me. And I'm looking, because I had just seen her two feet away, and I'm going, where? And she puts her head out. She puts her face out like that for me to look at her, the right side of her face. And I'm looking, but at that point also, I'm looking, and I turn, I turn around, get on the other side. We're in the doorway. So I'm on this side with the light shining this way from the doorway with the lights above and but the sunshine. And she's got her face out like this, looking, you know, to show me. And I'm looking, and I go, I inspect the face. I'm looking at her forehead. I'm looking at the side of her, uh, side of her eye. I'm looking at her cheek. I'm looking at the, her chin. I'm looking at the other side of the face. I'm looking at the whole thing. And I don't see anything. I don't see anything to, to I don't see a, a cut, a bruise, swelling, redness. It's just Amber's face that she's going like this and showing me. So I'm not seeing anything. I back up and I'm making a joke. I make a joke going, well, I don't see anything, but maybe all the beauty from one side of your face to the other side of the face is outshining everything. So I can't see anything. And she's laughed and she's, you know, smiled. And I just looked at everybody and said, hey, this, it sounds nuts. And I went and I gave, I said, I gotta go. And I gave her a hug and kissed her on that side of the face. Kissed her on that side of the face. And then I left, said goodbye. What was her reaction when you kissed her on that side of the face? Nothing. Did she flinch? No. Did you see Ms. Hurd again the next day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When was that? So that's Monday. That was May 22nd, my birthday. So then the next day is uh, Monday, the 23rd. I had woken up uh, with a chest cold and uh, I heard a knock on the door and it's Amber. So I opened up the door. Around what time was that? That's, I wanna say, maybe around maybe around noontime maybe a little bit before maybe it could have been a little bit i think around noontime again and uh i went downstairs and i opened up the door and when you opened the door did you have a good view of miss Hurd? absolutely yeah 
How was the lighting? Lighting's fine. Lighting from the, from outside and there's light from uh, my place. Yeah, so there's, uh, the lighting was great. Did you see any marks on Ms. Hurd's face at that time? No, same thing like the, 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 the day before. There's no redness, there's no swelling, there's no bruises, there's no cuts, there's no nothing. This is Amber, looking like Amber. Did you notice if she was wearing any makeup at that point? She didn't look like she was wearing makeup then either. What did Ms. Hurd say to you during that encounter? She was knocking on my door to see if uh, I would take uh, the house key, her house key, to let the cleaning lady in because she had to go somewhere. And I, I, I woke up that day and I had some kind of chest cold thing. I was upstairs laying down. And so I, I looked at her and I said, hey, listen, I'm, you know, I, I, I'm feeling sick. I'm gonna be upstairs laying down this entire time for the day or whatever. And that, uh, so I, can, I'm not, I can't do it. And then uh, she stood there and, and uh, is like, well, I gotta figure out what to do. Like maybe if she was only dependent upon me to, to give the housekeeper the key, it's the same, the housekeeper is, cleans both of our places. And uh, so I said, hey, listen, why don't you go ahead and take the key and put it in an envelope and bring it downstairs to the concierge, you know, one of the, and the, that's where the key will be. And tell Hilda, who is the housekeeper, that uh, that's where the key is. And uh, that's it, and you're, you're set. And she was like, yeah, okay, I guess I could do that. And I'm look, I'm three feet away from her, two and a half, three feet away from her talking with her. And how long did that conversation last? Three minutes. Did you see Ms. Hurd again the next day? Yes, I did. Where did you see her? All right. It, uh, I go down, I'm leaving the, my apartment on Tuesday to go downstairs to the cafe to go get something hot to drink. I still haven't shopped or did anything for what's a chest cold. And uh, so I need, wanted something hot to drink. I go downstairs and uh, as I'm locking my door, that uh, all of a sudden a group of women uh, uh, walk, come up to Penthouse 3. Because in the corridor on the graph, you could see we share the same corridor. So I closed, I'm locking my door and a group of women show up. Did you recognize who the women were? Three of them, yeah. Who were they? It was, you know something, I'm unsure if it was four or five women, but it's uh, Amber, it's her sister Whitney, and it's uh, Mel uh, Melanie, Iglesias, who's a makeup artist for Johnny and, and Amber. And then there's two other women I'm, I'm, that I didn't, I didn't recognize, but I'm not sure. Did you interact with the women at all? Well, I, I, after closing the door, Whitney, who calls me her spirit animal, came running, came running down the, you know, down the, the hallway going, Isaac, spirit animal, and I'm, I'm going. Hey, listen, I'm not feeling so hot. I'm not feeling so good, and I get duck under her arms. You know, stop. And I, I love you, but stop. And I duck under her arms, and and uh, and I go past, and I'm now I'm passing the other ladies, uh, Amber and her, uh, who she's with, and uh, I'm. I'm looking at them, and they're laughing of this whole scene, and then that was it. And then I walked, went past, and went down and got some hot tea. Did you see Ms. Hurd's face during that encounter? It was a quick glance, but nothing, you know, nothing just, just shot out to me to, like, notice anything. Um, did you see Ms. Hurd again the day after that? Well, I saw her again that day. Oh, can you describe that, please? Yeah. That on the way back from me being outside at the cafe, getting uh, having a, a tea, I come walking back in, and now all her, her and her, the women that she was with are coming back out, and we're in the lobby, and so and the doors of the lobby, it's all windows, is 
great light shining through the entire lobby. And the women are, there's a table in the middle of the lobby and her, uh, her friends, or uh, I don't know if they're friends or not, I know three, you know, one's a sister and the other one's a friend. They're coming, they're walking on one side of the table and then she's on the other side of the table where I'm walking and now we're, wa we're walking past each other and she's, you know, of course we're gonna acknowledge each other and looking at each other. And now she, she's the sun shining right in our face it's to my back because I'm walking in. And so that's like this and, and saying, all right, hey, all right, enjoy yourself. Have a good time or whatever, whatever you're doing, you know, and go by. And I went up and that was it. That was the second time that I saw her. And that's on Tuesday. And did you get a good look at her face during oh, that second encounter? Absolutely. The sun shining right on her face. Did you notice anything unusual about her face? Nothing. No, no, no uh, cuts, no bruises, no swelling, no uh, red, redness, no, it's Amber. It's Amber's face. And then did you see Ms. Hurd again the day after that? Yes, I did. And that's Wednesday, May 25th? That's right. Where did you see her? At that point, I was, was like, okay, I got to shop for something to, because uh, otherwise I'm not going to get rid of this chest cold. I, I would go to the store, and on the way back, in between the garage and the building, there's this room with like vestibule, you know, that's uh, that's you have to walk through. And I'm coming in to go into the building. And Amber and Whitney, her sister, are coming out of the building to go into the garage. And we met there. How long did you speak with them, if at all? Yeah, we spoke. That's so we're, it, we're facing each other. Um, them, uh, Amber and Whitney are st st across from me. We're two and a half feet, two feet away from each other talking. Of course, and so we stop, of course. To say, hey, what's up? What are you doing? Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you coming from? I have bags of food in my hand of, of stuff that I went and I bought. And so I said, hey, I'm coming from shopping. I finally bought myself some stuff to get rid of this chest cold thing. And uh, they go and this, they're going to the uh, CVS. And they look at me and they and so what's yapping? Everything, everyone's smiling and stuff and. And she says, you sure we, you, we can't get you anything? Do you, how about we get you some aspirin or some, you know, some uh, cold stuff? I said, no, I think I got everything. And uh, that, and they said, you sure? And I said, yeah, yeah, of course, I got it. Don't, so don't sweat it. And, uh, I, uh, you know, a kiss or whatever. I got my hands, I can't hug or whatever. So, and then, uh, uh, I said to see you, and I went on, went up, and they went through the garage. That was the. That was that was it that day. Did you have a good look at her face during that conversation? Yes, this room. Yes, yeah, this room. It's comp it's it's completely lit. That it's a spot, and there's a camera, uh, taking uh. uh, uh you know, cameras always on a security camera, and all, always and so it's got good lighting and stuff because this is a spot where if you use your, uh, your fob key to to go into this into the building, well, the door takes a long time to you know it's, it's one of those things with the uh, pressure thing that the, the door just doesn't close shut. It takes a while to for it to close. Someone could be in the garage who's not supposed to be in the garage, run and hold the door open. And that they, then they get into the apartment building and then who knows, some, maybe somebody gets ripped off. But so it's well lit for security reasons and that there's a, there's a camera there. It's taking pictures, uh, you know, doing what the camera does. Was Ms. Heard wearing makeup during that um, discussion? Neither of them looked like they were wearing makeup at all. Whitney had this hat on that uh, it was a fun hat or whatever uh, and that 
no 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 makeup i don't i don't even know whitney to to be a a, a makeup person and that uh amber no she looked like she was you know just natural amber it's it's all you know just as always no makeup did you notice any marks on miss Hurd's face no no did you notice any swelling no no swelling no there's no nothing. There's no swelling, no bruising, no redness, no cuts, no... I don't even, you know, nothing. Turning back to uh, May 21st for a second, when you first heard that Ms. Hurd told you Mr. Depp had hit her, do you recall that? Say that again? When Ms. Hurd told you that Mr. Depp had hit her on May 22nd, yeah, my birthday. How did you feel hearing her say that? All right. Irrelevant. What's the relevance to how he felt? I, think, I mean, it's a present sense impression of how he well, perceived that in that moment. I'll sustain the objection. <clears throat> Mr. Bridge, did you see Ms. Hurd at all the rest of that week of May 23rd? No. Did you learn at some point in time that Ms. Hurd had filed for divorce from Mr. Depp? Say that again? Did you learn at some point in time that Ms. Hurd had filed for divorce from Mr. Depp? Yeah. How did you learn that? I learned it from the internet. After the weekend, around as probably Monday, sun, either Sunday or Monday, I'm on the internet and I end up seeing a picture of, it was the Friday of that the, that week, the past week, and there's a picture of Amber wearing a black morning dress and with this brown mark on her cheek, and that she's uh, she's been to a, a divorce. Uh, you know, she went to go file for divorce. That's how I found out. Were you surprised when you saw that? Surprised is not the word. It's like, what the hell is this? What's going on? At any point when you had seen her um, during that prior week, had she told you that she intended to file for divorce? Objection. Maybe. I'll, I'll allow it. Go ahead. You can answer the question, sir. What's the question again? At any point when you had seen her during that week, had Ms. Hurd told you that she intended to file for divorce? No. No. She never once. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday or Friday, not even see it? No. There's no, I, I'm clueless. She does not, she did not say anything about divorce. So what did you think when you saw those pictures um, and read the articles and learned that she was filing for divorce? I'm sorry, objection, relevance to what right. he thought. It, I mean, it relevance. builds on all of the testimony he's given previously. Right. Right. I'll sustain the objection. When did you see Ms. Hurd next after that? She knocks on my door June 3rd, Friday, Friday, a Friday night, June 3rd. She knocks, I've, she knocks on my door around 11 o'clock is, is the next time that I see her. And what happened when she knocked on your door on June 3rd? I opened the door. I opened up the door and naturally, you know, something I'll say is, hey, how you doing, you know? to say hello. So I open up the door and say, hey, how you doing? And she looks at me and she says, I'm not feeling so hot that uh, I made some food. Would you like to come over and eat with me? And at that point, after you know everything I've seen, I looked at her and I said, listen, me and you, we're not gonna talk anymore. After everything that I've just seen all week long from, from the past couple, past week and change, you, uh, listen, I'm confused, I'm angry, and I'm frustrated by everything that I've seen. And that I think the best thing is for me and you that we don't talk anymore. Did That's, she say anything in response? Yes, she, in response to that, she looks at me and she says, I told Johnny, I don't want anything. The lawyers are making me do all, all of this. And I, you know, that's what she said. Did you respond to Ms. Hurd? 
No, what I was thinking was that to me when after saying that, after she said that to me, I'm thinking to myself, gay cock em yum. Hey, how, you know. All right, I'll sustain that objection. Next question. Did you see any injuries on Ms. Hurd's face on June 3rd when you spoke with her? No. Did you ever speak with Ms. Hurd again after that? Well, she said to me uh, after uh, that, the lawyers are making me do all of this. Uh, then she's, uh, I was just looking at her and then she ended what she was saying by saying, uh, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. And I closed the door and would never talk to her ever again. Did you have any interactions with the staff at the Eastern Columbia building um, about Ms. Hurd's allegations uh, against Mr. Depp? Objection, Your Honor, may we approach? Okay. Mr. Bridge, did you have any interactions with the staff of the Eastern Columbia building about Ms. Hurd's allegations against Mr. Depp? Yes. And at some point, uh, did you see a security video taken in the Eastern Columbia building? Yes. When was that? At some time in June, maybe two weeks in or something like that. It's two, three weeks in. Can you describe um, what you saw in that video? Yes, I can. It was a video of uh, Amber and Whitney waiting uh, at the elevator, a mezzanine level, coming from the garage, obviously, and uh, waiting for the elevator. And Whitney does this to Amber. Pow! And hits her, to, to, like faking, hitting her in the face, going pow! And then they start laughing. Did Ms. Hurd react at all in that video to the fake punch that you observed Whitney throw? Yeah, the, she's laughing. After doing it, they both, uh, you know, laughing at each other, with each other. Mr. Baruch, do you know who Elon Musk is? Sure. Have you ever seen Mr. Musk in person? Yeah. Where did you see him in person? First time was... Uh, I'm getting into the elevator on the rooftop, penthouse level. I'm get going into the elevator and he's coming out of the elevator, going past me. And when did that take place? This is after May. This is sometime June, it could be July, but after May. That, in that same year, 2016? Yeah. And when was the second time that you saw Mr. Musk? Uh, one morning waking up and going and opening up the shades to uh, the bedroom and it's on the second floor and it overlooks the balconies, our adjoining balconies, because my balcony joins with uh, John and Amber's uh, balcony. And that I, opening up the shades, I see uh, Elon Musk going through the, the balcony door on their side uh, to then walk down a common corridor to that then at the end leads to a, a door that you then you walk out to the rest of, of the rooftop and it could you go to the pool you go to the gym and stuff so I'm looking out and I, the view the the view out the window is of the both of our balconies so that's where I saw him. 
And when was that? Oh, I, sometimes it's, it's either June, July, some, but it's after May. Mr. Bruce, how long have you known Mr. Depp? Met him, I believe, in 1980, and uh, what's 42 years? Well, it's gonna be 42 years. Have you ever seen uh, Mr. Depp be violent when angry with Ms. Hurd? Objection leading. I'll allow the question, okay. I'm allowed to answer? Yes, yes. What's sir. the question again? Have you ever seen Mr. Depp be, be violent when angry with Ms. Hurd? No. Well, the, from what I said uh, from before, there was an argument that I walked in. So there's obviously there's that, that but have I ever seen him be violent to her uh, with uh, physicality? No. Did you ever Never. see him hit her? Never. In your three and a half years living at the Eastern Columbia building next to Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd, did you ever observe any injuries or marks on Ms. Hurd? Objection leading, Your Honor. All right. I'll sustain as to lead him. Okay. Did you ever notice anything unusual about Ms. Heard when you were living at the Eastern Columbia building with Objection her? Objection leading, Your Honor. I'll allow it. I can answer? Yes, sir. What's the question again? Did you ever notice anything unusual about Ms. Heard during the time that you were living next door to her at the Eastern Columbia building? Besides having great teeth? No. Mr. Bruch, are you appreciative of everything that Mr. Depp has done for you? Objection, Your Honor. Leading and relevant. All right, I'll sustain us to leading. All right. Mr. Bruch, how do you feel about what Mr. Depp has done for you? Objection. Well, you know what? No, I'll go ahead. Okay, go ahead. I think that's, what, I think that's withdrawn. Go ahead. You can answer the question. Oh. I could just answer the question, sir. And the uh, question is? How do you feel about everything that Mr. Depp has done for you? Oh, come on. This is, it's unreal. It's, you know, you think too much about it, you're going to cry. That uh, I appreciate everything that he's done for me. Um, you know, I, it's like stuff you can't pay back. Would you lie for him under oath? Oh, no, 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 no. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Have you given truthful testimony today, sir? Objection, Your Honor, leading. It's still leading. I'll sustain the objection. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. All right, cross-examination. Let's start with the makeup. Now, you know that Ms. Hurd was- Excuse me. I I'm didn't sorry? hear the beginning of what you started saying. I said, let's start with the makeup. Okay. Okay. You're aware that Ms. Hart, Ms. Hurd has both modeled and been an actor and had been for many years before you met her, correct? I knew she acted. I didn't know she was a model. Okay. Were you aware that she had a commercial uh, uh, agreement with L'Oreal, for example? When now or back then? What, what's your knowledge? I don't know any of that. Okay. Have you ever been with Ms. Hurd when she has put makeup on? I've been in the room, yeah, when she's putting, when makeup was getting put on her, yeah. When makeup was being put on her, was this for some acting role or something like that? It was an event that they were going to. Mm -hmm. So that was somebody else applying makeup to Ms. Yep. Hurd, who was going to have some gala event that she was going to. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever been with Ms. Hurd in her bathroom or anything when she's applying her makeup in the morning? No. Okay. Do, do you, are you familiar with Amica cream? What is it? Amica. Amica? Yes. No. Okay. Do you know what type of foundation Ms. Hurd uses? No. Do you know what type of concealer Ms. Hurd uses? No. Do you know what type of tint Ms. Hurd uses? I have no clue. Do you know what types of powders Ms. Hurd uses? No. Okay. So when you're saying that you didn't notice any makeup, would it be fair to say that you, yourself, 
are not familiar with what type of makeup Amber Heard uses on a daily basis? I don't know what she uses on a daily basis. That's my point. Now, the first time that you saw her, which was May 22nd. Yeah. Ms. Heard was there. Were you aware she was on her way to somebody else's birthday party? Not yours, but somebody else's that day. No. Okay. Can you tell me what her hairstyle was that day? It's just down. Down as in? Just regular. How uh, she has it up now. She's got some kind of hairstyle, but no, she's, she was no hair down, regular, no makeup, just hanging. Well, when you say no makeup, you don't know she was not wearing makeup, correct? For a fact? Correct. No. And you don't know whether she had applied Amica cream, correct? No. And I you, didn't even know what Amica cream is. And you don't know whether she had had applied concealer or foundation or powder or tint, correct? That's correct. Okay. Now, if she's going out to a party, yeah. do you think she would want to have her bruise exposed? Objection, Your Honor. What's the objection? Calls for speculation. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Next question. So, um, do you recall what Ms. Hurd was wearing that day? You know something? I could have sworn she had on a schmata dress, a uh, hippie dress at that particular time, but I could be confusing it with June 3rd. She's got this Victorian type of uh, uh, long hippie dress that has embroidery, and I, she definitely was wearing that that, that night. All right, but, but uh, let's go back to May 22nd. Do you yeah. recall what she was wearing? I could have swore she was wearing, uh, wearing a, a, another schmata dress that I've seen her hanging around uh, uh, the apartment with. And, and do you recall what color? No. Okay. Do you recall what jewelry Ms. No. Heard was wearing that day? Okay. Now, you indicated that there was a security guard there, and there yes. was Josh Drew, correct? Yeah. And was there anyone else there? Yeah, the two locksmiths. Okay. So and also in the apartment, for a fleeting second, the person went walking by and who seemed to me look like it was Raquel Pennington, but it could be, it could have been uh, another friend that was supposedly staying with them. Okay, so you saw somebody come by. So, so how many? No, go go through the living room, and then they're out of the picture because they went upstairs. So they're at this. That's somebody that w else was in that room, and but walking by. Okay. Yeah. So, and you talked to Josh. What did Josh tell you? Josh when? Drew. He took you to the side. What did he tell you? Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. I'll sustain the objection to hearsay. All right. Before you spoke with Josh Drew in the other room, what, if anything, had been said about what Mr. Depp did the night before? Objection to the extent it calls for hearsay, Your Honor. Right. Yeah, hearsay. Objection. I'll sustain that objection. I, I, I'm, not, I'm asking what, if anything. I, that, that was still solicit hearsay. Well, what, but he already testified about what Amber said. I'll go back to that. Okay. So what exactly did Amber Heard tell you happened the night before? As I was walking up the first time, she t turned to me and said, Johnny came by last night and got violent. So I'm changing the locks on one, penthouse one, three, and five. Don't worry about your place. Okay. Did you ask her for any more specifics on what about she meant by getting locks? violent? Huh? Did you ask her for any specifics about what she meant by he came by and got violent? No. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to jump you to the next day for a few, and then I'm going to come back. But let's go to the next day. 
So the next day you testified that you saw her twice, correct? From Sunday? No. Monday I saw her once. In the morning, uh, to, to, I want That's to say around 12. That's when she came 12. by to ask if you could have the key or that you could leave the key for the house. Right, right, for Hilda. And you weren't feeling well, right? That's right. Okay. So you wouldn't have been standing very close to Amber, right? Because you were sick? Well, I opened up the door and I'm holding the door. We're like three feet away from each other. Yeah. Okay. And you told her you were sick, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you know where she was going out someplace, correct? She had, she was going somewhere. All yeah. right. She wasn't going to be there. All right. Do you know whether she had applied any Amica cream that morning to her face? No. Do you know whether she had applied any concealer to her face that morning? No. Do you know whether she had applied any foundation that morning? No. Do you know whether she had applied any tint that morning? No. Do you know whether she had applied any powder that morning? No. Okay. Now, the next day... I can tell you, she looked like she wasn't wearing any makeup. Right. And would you agree that people who are models and actors can be pretty darn good with putting makeup on so that you can't tell they're wearing makeup? Objection, Your Honor. Foundation calls for speculation. I, I, I think that's a fair question to it, ask him. It, uh, I'll sustain as a speculation. Next, All right. next question. Do you have any knowledge of the skills of Amber Heard with respect to putting on makeup? Well, it can't be that good because she's got a friend who is a makeup artist who came over to do makeup, but I don't really know. Right, and, and that makeup artist that comes over does it when she's going to be on some show or in some big public event or gala, right? Yeah. She, yeah, that makeup person, and you're talking about Melanie Iglesias, right? Uh, that right, makeup, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. And exactly. that makeup person doesn't put Amber's makeup on every day for her, does she? I wouldn't know. How many times have you did you see Melanie Iglesias put makeup on Amber? One time. Okay. It's just one time. Okay. So she wasn't living at Amber's house, right? No, no, no. Okay. I had we I, I hung out with her and her, her husband and Johnny and uh, and Amber and you know over there one time eating, uh, and then another time it was when I met her that uh, seeing her put, do makeup for these guys. Okay, so so you don't you're not saying that that Amber doesn't know how to put makeup on herself. Correct? Oh, well, no, I'm sure she does. Okay. But, but again, I would you, think she does, you, you know. But for the most, I'll tell you what, over three and a half years, living around, around each other, for the, most, for the most part, she's not a makeup wearing person, completely natural. Her rocky, total great complexion, Texas uh, natural neck girl next door, no makeup wearing, hanging out. Did Amber ever tell you she was not wearing makeup? Did she ever tell me? In, in any of those three when? and a half years that you're saying she wasn't wearing it around the house, did she ever say, I don't have a stitch of makeup on? As, ma as many times as she's told me, I am wearing makeup, which is... I can't remember, so I don't know. Yeah, no. I, there's not one time I remember that, or okay. saying that. Okay, so now let's go to the next day. I think that's the day you've got the two times uh, that you saw her. She's with other people, yeah. and she's either going out or coming in, correct? Well, first time they're coming in, and the second time they're going out. So they've been out someplace before they're coming in, correct? Objection, Your Honor. Foundation? I'll allow it. You can answer the question, sir. Oh, I have no clue. Okay, okay. But they're, they're physically entering the house. In other words, they haven't been in the house. They're coming to the house from someplace, right? Oh, I would have no idea. When I walked out, who knows? They might have been out and in twice before that, but I, I don't know. They okay. could be coming from another apartment, uh, you know, coming, you know, to go there. And I'm seeing them. It could be the second time that they're entering this apartment or the first time or the third time. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I have no idea. And, and, and do you know 
so you don't know where they were. No. And so you have not. no idea whether they were out in public someplace, correct? No, of okay. course not. All I right. won't know that. All right. Um, and then the later time that you saw them that day, they were going out. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And do you know whether Amber had any Amica cream on that day? I don't know. I don't know. And I'll try to make this faster. Do you know whether Am Amber was wearing concealer, foundation, powder, or tint that day? I don't know. Okay. Now, the next day, I think you said it was she and Whitney. Is that correct? On Wednesday, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and again, do you know whether she was wearing any Amica cream? <laughs> Sir, if you could just answer this I'm question. I'm totally sorry. I'm Thank sorry. You, sir. That, uh, no. And do you know whether she was wearing concealer, foundation, powder, or tint? No. Okay. Can you tell me what Amber's hairstyle was on the 23rd? That's Monday. Like I said, when she knocks on my door, hairs down. Okay. Can you tell me what she was wearing that day? Not exactly, but if I, if best of my recollection, a pair of dungarees and a t-shirt. Okay. At the time when she knocked on my door to give me the key, if she went home to go change or something like that, I got no clue. Okay. Do you but remember what color the t-shirt was? I think it might have been white, best of my recollection. Do you remember what jewelry Amber had on? Oh. Okay, let's go to the next day, the, the Wednesday, and you've got all these people here. Next, next day is Tuesday. Okay, next day, Tuesday is when you had the, the bunch of people coming together to her house the first time, right? Right. What was she wearing then? You want to know something? I do remember uh, of a, a women's beige uh, long coat, Kind of like a, a woman's, uh, not a raincoat, but it could be similar to that. It was a beige, long, kind of looking like a business coat type of thing. A female version of a Colombo jacket. Okay. And what was she wearing under it? Oh, I have no, I, I have no clue. Okay. And do you remember what jewelry she was wearing? No. Okay. Now, you said that on the 22nd that you kissed her on the cheek. What day? Uh, the 22nd, your birthday? 22nd, Sunday, yes. Okay. So, when you showed it the first time, you went like this, right? And then the next time when you said you did the kisses, you went like this. What's your typical way of kissing women when you greet them or I say goodbye? Did, I'm not understanding any of what you just did. Okay, so when you, well, well, I'll just leave it at Amber. When you, I take it that you would regularly kiss Amber on the cheek when you used to say hello and to say goodbye? Oh, yeah, lie? yeah, okay. absolutely. And, and tell us how you did that. Objection. Can you just show it. us how you did that? Which time, regularly? Oh, did, which, did you have a different way of kissing her on the cheek different times? Or did you have a, a general way that you would greet or say goodbye to, to Amber with kisses? Regular, it's a regular, you know, you give a, you give a peck on the cheek. Or, you know, like you just touch cheeks and, and okay. that's that. So it's, it's, it's a pretty soft, it's kind of like a, almost a superficial one, or is it a really hard one on the cheek? Uh, no. It's, uh, you know, just, uh, yeah, you, you kiss someone on the side of the cheek. I don't know, pressure-wise, what kind of talk uh, is there? Uh, I, I mean, is it, is it just one of these little pecks, uh, or is it is it much harder? No, it's a regular. You, you, you touch, you know, you touch and boink, and that's that. Okay. So so you think it was pretty hard? You, you peck her on the cheek pretty hard every time? Objection, Your Honor. No, I'll sustain the objection if you want the next question. Okay. Oh, you also showed that you did a, one like this. Did you ever do a, a two kiss when you greeted Amber? Two cheeks? No, I'm not European. I'm from <laughs> Brooklyn. No. That, no, you give, you know, Europeans do the, you know, 
right. both sides. Sometimes you even three. Bam, bam, bam. bam you know, but, you, so, but you never did no. that? No, no, okay. no. All right, let's go to the fake punch. I want to make sure that I understand exactly what you remember seeing. Yeah. You said that it was two to three weeks into June. Is that correct? That you saw it? got to be somewhere in that period. Okay. To some somewhere in the the first three if the if I would say the first 3 weeks of June. All right. Uh yeah, somewhere like that. Can, can you recall which week? No. Okay. So you saw Whitney and Amber. Was there anyone with them? No. Okay. Do you recall what either of them was wearing? Long jackets. Yes, actually I do. Okay. Long jackets, you know, overcoats. And how was Amber's hairstyle that day? Down, pulled back. Pulled back or Well, down? when I say pull, you know, it's like hairs down, you know, maybe because of something around the neck or whatever, the hair is, you know, flipped back or whatever. Not tied back, I don't remember if it was tied back, but just where it's full. Oh, okay. that I remember. Okay, so now where were they standing when you watched this? This is uh, the, where were they standing? Yes. They're standing, waiting for one of the elevators on the mezzanine floor where there's, I guess you could see, uh, there's cameras that, you know, has that view of the, 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 of the elevators so on the mezzanine on the, floor. So they're on the mezzanine level. Yeah, this is the waiting. same level. This is the same level. There's apartments on that level. And that that's how the exit, how you get out to go to the garage. And so were they coming back from the garage? Well, if they're standing at the elevator outside, that it could be and waiting to get into the elevator on that floor. So it could be that maybe they came from outside. Maybe they know somebody who lives on that floor because there's apartments there. I got no clue where they're coming from. It's, it's, that's not even in, in the thought process. It's when I see that, when I see this, it's not like, wow, I wonder where they're coming from. Okay. No, no, it's okay. just, so now, what I saw. tell me where they were each standing. As I'm watching the video, this tape, uh, Amber's on the left and Whitney's on the right. Okay. And then tell me, just take us through. Tell me what you saw. Amber's on the Amber's on the left. Whitney's on the right. They're hanging out. Can I stand up? Yes, sir. And so here's Amber, here's Whitney, and they're hanging, waiting for the elevator. And Whitney does, they're looking at each other, yapping or whatever they're doing. And Whitney goes like this. Pow. Just a, a fake pow. And then they both start laughing. And then they're just standing there, doing, yapping, doing and, what they're doing. And how close does Whitney's fist get to Amber? Oh, I'm watching this. It's a fake thing. It's not. It's right, not right. like she went and she hit her own no, no, no. sister. No, but I'm she asking how close. She, she just, you know, going pow. If here's my face, if here's if if here's my face, you know, it's just coming by. You know, fake punch going by. This, you know, that far. Okay. Just making believe. Just making believe. Okay. It's a believe punch. Okay. And and then they both laugh. You say. Yeah, they both, you know, they just start, you know. Did, did you watch them get on the elevator? No. Okay, so the part that you saw, they the elevator never opened during that time. That's that's right. Okay. That is correct. And, and how many seconds would you say, or minutes, would you say this little clip was? Oh, what I saw was 10 seconds, uh, 15 seconds. Okay. And do you recall what day that was? That I saw this? No, no, no. 
W was there a date on this the video? Oh, I don't, I don't, uh, I if there was, uh, it wasn't something that I acknowledged. Okay, good, good, thank you. All right, now let's go back to the argument that you witnessed between Mr. Uh, Depp and actually Ms. Hurd, who was on the phone or the speaker phone. Do you recall testifying about Say that? Say this again, start again, start yes. again. Yes, let's go back to you testified that you observed an argument between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd. Do you recall that? You came into the room, Mr. Depp had yeah. Amber on speakerphone. Do you recall that? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Mr. Depp was drunk. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay. And do you recall that Amber was actually in London, not New York? No. You don't recall that? No, I thought it's, it's I think I thought it was she was in New York. Okay. And you recall that Mr. Depp was accusing Amber of sleeping with somebody, right? There was somebody else in the room with her, and that's that's and that's what they were arguing about. Are you sure that Mr. Depp wasn't thinking there was someone in the room and she was trying to tell him there wasn't somebody in the room? He, uh, say that again? Are you sure he wasn't saying someone was in the room and she was trying to convince him there wasn't anybody in the room? Well, he said that, that he heard uh, the other voice. Okay, and were, did you hear the voice? Oh, no. Okay. I walked in there already, it's, this is already in motion. Right, and Amber's saying, why are you saying that, right? Amber was, Amber was saying, oh, come on, baby, why are you being like this? What are you, what are you doing? Come on, Johnny, what, there's no need, why are you being like this? Right. And it was taunting. How, how is it taunting to say, why are, why are you accusing me of having somebody in my room? Because they were in the midst of no solution. At that point, it's, it would be, if it, instead of taunting, saying, listen, John, let's talk tomorrow and let's end this conversation right now and, every, and, and we'll talk tomorrow and we'll get to an understanding because there's not going to be any solution right now. But there was none of that. It was just con continuous, oh, baby, oh, baby. So and that kept it going. If, if Mr. Depp in his drunken state was suffering from delusions and, and thought he heard a voice and wasn't, do you think it would have been reasonable for Amber to be saying, what's going on? Why are you saying this? What's going on? Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. I'll allow the question if you can answer it. You can answer the question, sir, if you... Would I think it would be what? If, if Mr. Depp was suffering from delusions and there wasn't anybody in the room and he hadn't heard a voice but thinks he's hearing a voice, would it be reasonable for Amber to be trying to figure out what's going on? Objection, Your Honor. Hypothetical speculation. I'll sustain as a speculation to that question. Okay. And, and the bottom line is you came in on the call, so you don't know what he said first or whether there was any voices, correct? Whether he heard voices? Yes. Besides hers? Yes. No, I didn't hear the beginning of the conversation. Okay. And then after the hang up, he went straight to bed, right? No, after the first hang up, yeah. she, she calls back again, which uh, was 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 it necessary? I don't know. And Do then know a third time, she knew? Do you know whether she knew whether he accidentally hung hung up or not? That he accidentally hung up? Right. Do you know whether she knew whether whether he hung up intentionally or accidentally? No, I, the same okay. way that I wouldn't know if, like, you know, yeah, she didn't know that the telephone line got cut. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so after the three calls that you testified about, he went straight to bed, right? Went to the couch and laid down. Right. And, yeah. and he was drunk. Yeah, and went, and he went, went to sleep. Yeah, he went out. Do you know whether he'd taken any drugs that night? 
Now, you have known, uh, you've already testified, you've known him for 42 years. He, yeah. You didn't pay rent at the penthouse, correct? No, no one did. Right, right, right. Okay, and then after you finished at the penthouse, you went over and lived with him in Sweetser, correct? I live in uh, one of his house, uh, house that he owns on Sweetser. And you still live there? Yes. And rent-free, correct? Yes. Okay, and uh, is... It has other than the hundred thousand, you never paid that back, right? The hundred thousand that he's given you. No, that's not. That's a thing that, that that's a thing for me. When I, if the, how I look at it and stuff, at some point I would love to uh, pay it back, pay back uh, some that money, but that's not something that is expected. That's he's expecting. Would you say so, you're kind of beholden to Mr. Dell? No, not beholden at all. Uh, he, he's given you $100,000. He's put Over you in that nice... Of, I'm sorry. I started... I didn't hear the whole question. Can he, you say he, it again? You were rent-free in, in penthouses for a number of years, and now you've been rent-free ever since in suites, sir? That's, that's a nice friend. Yeah, okay. And you I think you testified already you're pretty angry with Ms. Hurd, right? When I, I wrote it down that you oh were, about all the phony about the phony pictures was, that were that were taken and put you, in uh, tabloids and about the fake narrative and about uh, and the way she's uh, trying uh, at trying to got a a, a a fraudulent DV claim to extort and blackmail uh, a man. Uh, yeah, that kind of got me uh, uh, angry frustrated, confused, angry, upset. Yes, which is why I said the best thing for us to do is not to talk to each other. Okay. And, yes. And, and was it fair to say you're still angry with her? Oh, you know something? It's six years. But it's we just heard six you give years. your version. Am I angry anymore? I'm not, you know, I, what I am is tired. And I want this all to end. Her to go heal, him to go heal. She, you know, you, the, it, it, so many people are, have been affected by this malicious lie that she started and she created. And it's gone out the door and around the world. And so I don't need, I, I can't even paint anymore. I've stopped painting for the last who knows how many years. And that's affected by stuff. It's, it's, it, I don't, I, I'm not angry at anybody. I want the best for her, for her to take her responsibility, heal, and, 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 and move on, move on. And, and for Johnny, John, you know, it's, his family has been completely wrecked by all of this stuff. And it's not, it's, it's, it's not, uh, it's not fair. It's not right what ha what she did and what happened for so many people to get affected from this. It's it's insane. And Mr. Baruch, this how this happened. And Mr. Baruch, if in fact she's telling the truth, and if in fact Mr. Depp who has engaged in enormous rage and domestic abuse and violence of Amber over a period of time that you wouldn't know about, then maybe it's time for him to take responsibility, don't you think? Objection, Your Honor. What's Specu the objection? Speculation. Lack of foundation. Relevance. Speculation. It's, it, he just went off on this rant and rave about assuming that she's... You, you asked questions. I'm I, I didn't ask a question that right. launched that. I, I'm going to sustain the objection. Okay, right, next you don't... I'll, I'll ask this. Okay. Mr. Broach, you don't know whether Mr. Depp has committed domestic violence of Amber Heard, do you? I never, I never witnessed... I never saw or witnessed whatever type of claim that is that is being said ever. 
Okay. I've never seen him be violent since kid, since teenagers from I, first meeting. I didn't ask you that. I said, you don't know whether he has committed domestic violence or abuse on Amber Heard. Isn't that correct? That's correct. I did okay. not witness any physical right. violence. But you have seen Mr. Depp use drugs as well as drink and be drunk, correct? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, I've how, partaken. I'm going to ask you to take a look. Let's let's pick up uh, Depp exhibit number 116 again. It's already in, if we can have that published to the jury. Ms. Bernhard, how, how much more do you think you have? I, I think I can finish it up if you okay, give me sure, five or sure. ten more no, minutes. Well. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe less. Okay, all right. I'll Thank hold you. you to that. Okay. okay. So, Mr. Bruce, I just want to make sure that I understand. Uh, this is the penthouse thing, and you said... Ms. if you could go to the microphone, it's just hard to hear yep, you. Yeah, I just realized that. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you. appreciate it. Um, so, on this diagram, when you got out of the... L was You said 9.30 today, but in fact, it was between 9.30 and 10 that you came back with your friend, correct? No, it was around 9.30. It could be five minutes one way, five minutes the other way. Could have been... Does, do you recall saying it was between nine and nine, or between nine thirty and ten earlier? Today? No. Did I say that? Do you recall? Do you recall? Are you sure it was nine thirty, give or take five minutes, or could it have been between nine thirty and ten? It was nine thirty, give or take five minutes, five to ten minutes, either way. And you saw a broken sconce. No. Nope. I did not see a broken sconce. What did you see? I saw a broken glass on the floor, shards of glass, pieces of glass, which I figured could have been a broken sconce or possibly maybe uh, the something from uh, the fire department stuff that's around the walls. So it could be something broken from that. But I real, you know, uh, maybe one of the sconces broke. I didn't see a broken sconce. I just saw the glass. Okay. Was was there typically a sconce right there as you come off the elevator? Yeah, from my memory, there was sconces on on the walls, certain places. Do Do you remember looking that night and saying, "Where did this glass come from?" There's There's a broken one. Did you tie it tie it together? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, it was. And it was an uh, uh, assumption it had to come from some of those places because uh, what, the, what the glass looked like to me looked like it might have come from one of those places. Okay. Could have been, you know, maybe the stunts. Okay, when you said from the fire thing, what, were you talking about the fire extinguisher? No, 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 fire? not the fire extinguisher. Uh, there's, there was a, uh, in the hallway that first hallway that you go through, the doors that you walk th through after you get out of the elevator, those doors, the fire doors that you close, all right, hopefully no one gets burned to death. That would be, uh, you know, crazy. Um, but then along the wall, I believe, before by the staircase, because there's a door that's when uh, next to Penthouse 5, then there's the doorway, the stairwell uh, door. And I believe there's a, a, a thing that's by the floor there that's, uh, that's got a, a glass plastic thing around it. So it could have been something from that. Your Honor, may I approach? All right, yes ma'am. Council. Do you have another copy of the deposition? Is this something for me to look at? Uh, just wait for a question, sir. Okay. I asked you a few minutes ago whether you you were sure that it was 9.30, give or take five minutes, or if it could have been somewhere between 9.30 and 10. Do you recall me asking that question? Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to ask you to take a look. Um, at page 39, do you recall giving your deposition on November 20, 2019? Oh, from down in Anaheim? Yes. 
Yeah, I remember that. And were that you under position. oath that's at first... that time? Well, that's, yeah. Okay. I think and that, that's, that's, I believe so, yeah. It was about two and a half years ago, wasn't it? Two, three, yeah, it's, yeah, okay. like between two and three years, yeah, sure. All right, so if you can take a look, starting on page 39. Hang on a second. And if you go to the line 21, where were you on the evening of May 21, 2016? And your answer was, all right. So I was out in the street. I met, I was with a buddy of mine, calls me. He asked if I wanted to go out and eat. And I says, I just ate, just meet me. Let's meet at the apartment, let's go hang out. So I met him at my apartment, probably, I want to say around 9.30 or a little bit later, I don't know, yeah, between 9.30 and 10, do you see that? So I met him at my apartment, probably, I want to say around 9.30 or a little bit later. I don't know, yeah, maybe between 9.30 and 10. Okay. And that ends up. So, so does that refresh your recollection that it could have been a little bit, somewhere between 9.30 and 10? I go more with 9.30, give or take five minutes, because it could have been 9.20. Okay. It but, could have been 9.25. It but, could have been 9.35, but I go with 9.30. But you, okay. And did you see any police officers? No. Okay. Did you ever hear any police officers? No. Okay. So let's go back to this 116 for a second. And you said that you saw a lot of wine at, at, right outside of Wait Penthouse. a second, it's line 115? Sorry, uh, the, the, the exhibit that's in front of you on the screen. Oh, oh, oh. So you go by Penthouse, now I have to hurry up to make my promise to the, Your Honor. Um, so you see Penthouse 1 there, and you said that the wine was in that area, right? It's in front of the door. Okay. It's a little, uh, it's, 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 it's gonna be, a foot and a half, two feet up further, north. North, closer on the way to PH3? No, it's right in front of the doorway. You have it past the doorway, the blue dot. It's, yeah, well, that wasn't it's just like in front of that doorway. There okay. we go, okay. Can you put the dot exactly where it was? Okay. Can I move that though? And and how how much how much wine was there? It's a puddle. It was a puddle. A puddle of wine. Could could you walk past it without seeing it? No. It, it was and could you tell a little bit about how much how much probably had been spilled of the wine? I mean, were we talking like a half a bottle, a bottle? Uh, looked like, you know, a couple of glasses of, of, uh, of wine, uh, making a puddle. Okay. Wasn't like a full bottle that's, that's you know, okay. that's a bit more. Okay, thank you. Your Honor, I do have another exhibit I need to put in, okay. and I think that might take a little bit longer than a couple of minutes. Well, so, how much time are you talking? As well, I, I, mean, I can do it as fast as I can. You but, can try. Okay, okay then let's, can we pick up, Heather, can you pick up, well, it's going to be Plaintiff's Exhibit 548. Now, do you have a recollection of, of uh, Mr. Depp uh, having a volatile relationship with his earlier uh, partner, Vanessa Paradis? No, but then again, I wasn't, uh, I met her a couple of times. I have no, I wasn't, we weren't, our paths weren't crossing at that particular time when they were together. All right, do you recall Mr. Depp ever referring to uh, a circumstance with her as carnage? What's the relevance, sir? Uh, we're talking, he, he's trying to give character testimony here, and I'm, um, I'll tell you what, I'll move to a different okay. one. all right. Now, you said that Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd were, uh, um, you said that they were always nice to each other? Yeah. Do you ever remember Mr. Depp 
referring to Amber uh, with the term cunt? Like to a face? No, no, to you. Calling, calling her a cunt to you. Maybe in a, maybe in a text. Uh... All right. Did did he do it more than once in a oh, text? Oh, I would have, I would have no recollection of that. I mean, he's called me a cunt in, uh, in, 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 in a text. So, I mean, it could be, uh, I don't know how many uh, uh, texts is, if there's something specific, if you could show me a text, that would be a different story. I don't, but I don't, you know, we've had many texts together, many okay. kind, you know. Okay. Let's go to line 57 then, of the, it would be section 57 of the uh, exhibit that I have in front of me. Now this is a text message between you and Mr. Depp. Do you see that? Well, there's 80 million texts on If you go down to 50, go to the one that's number 57. 57 from... Objection, this is from me to him. I'm sorry. May, may I approach? Okay, sure. Are you on 57 yet? 57. Right. And and this is to you, correct, from Mr. Depp? Is that how it's, uh, it says from 2400 That used to be my telephone number, so. That's two, correct? Oh, okay. I, see, I understand. I understand. Right. Yes, 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 All yes. Right. And, and, That's to me. All right. And, and the message he's sending to you, and this is October 18, 2016, is hopefully that... Objection, Your Honor. It exhibits not in evidence, and she's reading directly from it into the record. All right. Uh, all right. Does this refresh your recollection that Mr. Depp referred to uh, Amber Heard as a cunt, and in fact, rotting, cunt's rotting corpse is decomposing? Objection, Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection if you could rephrase. I'll ask it. I'll ask okay. it differently. Um, do you recall Mr. Depp ever telling you that he, in base terms, uh, hoped that Amber's rotting corpse is decomposing Objection, in the Honor. trunk of a Honda Civic? A lot. I'm not understanding the question. Say it again. Do you recall Mr. Depp? ever telling you that he hoped that Amber Heard's rotting corpse is decomposing in the fucking trunk of a Honda Civic. Objection. I I'll allow it. Yeah. You can answer the question, sir. Yeah, that, well, I say, yeah, I'm seeing it here. So obviously, yeah, it was said. Okay. It was written. And then go to 59, please. And when you had to move out of, out of the penthouse to go to Sweetser, do you recall Mr. Depp telling you that uh, this was Amber's fault and referring to her as a cunt? Can I read this yes, thing please. first so that yes, way please. I see what's going on?
So now, the, what's I, I've just read this, and I understand. I remember. I remember this exactly because this is the period of time. You know, I'm uh, I'm moving, uh, and that this the, he he's selling the apartments, and there's people who are coming over. I'm still living there, and it would have been better off if uh, if uh, I moved out. So that way, then the real estate people can look at it and not come in and look at the kind of paintings that I make and all that kind of crap. But my question yeah, so. to you is, do you recall Mr. Depp calling Amber Heard a cunt mm. and saying that she, it was her fault? Well, it's written there, so uh, yeah, I could see that. Okay. So it's, it's, if, uh, well, I don't know, that's not what he says. He says that cunt ruined such a fucking cool life we had for a while. I don't know. That's and he not, says, I can't even look at the building anymore, correct? Right, I can't even right. look at the building and he's anymore. selling it, right? Exactly. Okay, thank you. Your Honor, I'd like to move the admission of those two limited. Oh, excuse me, one moment. Uh, objection, Your Honor. There are some, uh, I mean, it's a significant exhibit. There's definitely some hearsay in there. Okay. I, I think uh, I'll reserve on that, on the entry of that, okay? We can discuss it later time, okay? Uh, are you done? Well, I'm not going to public. I'm, not, I'm, I'm reserving on whether. So, are we done with cross? Yes. Sir. Okay, and redirect briefly. Um, We're going to be done with this witness before lunch. Uh, okay. There I we go, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Bruch, do you recall um, that Ms. Bredehoff was just asking you some questions about some text messages you received from Mr. Depp? Yeah. Uh, do you recall when those text messages were sent? No, I'd have to look at them again and look at the date. Me Could you display it to the witness again? And I believe we looked at lines 59. Excuse me, 57. Do you see the date of when you received that text message? All right, hang on. Month before it was the month before I moved out. Okay. When was that text message sent? It says uh, 10 18 2016. That's October. That's I moved out the next month. So in November. So this is from uh, October. So was that message sent several months after Ms. Heard made um, claims against Mr. Depp of uh, domestic violence? Oh, yeah, yeah. Objection, Your Honor. I'll allow it. Yes, of course. This is after this, this whole fiasco that she started. And if we look at line 61. What am I looking at? Six. What's the date on that message? It's 1028, October. We can take that down. Mr. Bruch, uh, Ms. Bredehoff asked you a series of questions about the security video from the Eastern Columbia building that you um, observed. Do you recall that? Yeah, the PAL. Uh, when did you understand that footage was from? I'll sustain your asked and answer. Did you have an understanding at the time that you saw that video of when it was from? Objection, Your Honor. Same question. I'll sustain the objection. Ms. Bredehoff asked, also asked you um, a series of questions about um, the argument that you overheard between Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp on the phone. Do you recall that? Yes. And you could hear um, Ms. Hurd's voice on that phone, right? Yeah. Do you recall if that was a FaceTime call or if it was just regular speakerphone? Just, just speaker, speakerphone. And 
what did you understand her tone to be on that call that you overheard? I'll allow it if you can answer. It's fine. Taunting, egging on, almost deme uh, demeanoring, uh, the baby talk. Yeah, I'll, I'll sustain the objection as to his answer, and I'll strike it. The, the whole answer, Your Honor? That the answer, yes. <clears throat> I believe you testified that Mr. Depp um, hung up the phone during that conversation. Do you recall that? Yes. Did you understand that Mr. Depp was trying to end the argument by hanging up the phone? His understanding of what Mr. Depp was trying to do. All right, I'll sustain. That's to pass speculation. Your Honor, he, 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 he heard the phone call and he was there to directly but observe. what Johnny Depp's okay. intention was. Okay. I'll sustain his reaction. I know what my intention was. Sir, sir. Oh, I'm you, sorry. Okay, thank you. Wait for the question. Thank you, sir. What was your understanding of um, your intent with respect to uh, hanging up the phone on, on that Objection, conversation? He already asked and answered when he said he hung it up. Um, and so at it was asked and answered. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Next question. Nothing further. Your Honor. All right. Is this witness subject to recall? Possibly. Your Honor. There's, there's a silence. Okay. <laughs> so it, it, yes or no, or not, not for you, not from you. Sir. Yes, All right. yes, for us. All right, sir, since you're so subject to recall, that means that you may be called again to testify at some point. So that means that until that time, the rule and witnesses still, still is in place for you, so you cannot have any outside information or talk to anybody about your testimony here today, and uh, don't look at any information about this on the news, okay? Okay. All right, thank you, sir. You're free to go at this time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so... All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and take our afternoon uh, lunch. We'll, we'll give you till 2.30 uh, to, to take care of lunch again. No outside information, and uh, please don't discuss this case, okay? All right, thank you. Have a good, good lunch. So we'll come back at 2.30 then. Is that correct? All right. Thank you.
parties we are going to be calling Brandon Patterson by okay. video deposition designations at oh. this point. Okay. Um, and I just wanted to alert the court how we've handled the exhibits amongst the parties we've met and conferred. Um, the parties have agreed that we have no objections to the Eastern Columbia Building surveillance videos that have been authenticated by Mr. Brandon Patterson. Okay. Um, what, in his deposition. You, okay, do you, what exhibit numbers are they? <laughs> or who, whose exhibits are they and what? Well, so yeah. we have no objection to all, I think there's 87 okay. currently. So in the interest of time for the jury and the court and everyone here, um, because there are 87, we've agreed to show a selected smaller set, which had been identified by both parties. And um, both parties are taking on the responsibility of introducing and playing each exhibit for the jury. <laughs> Okay. With your honor's permission. So since Mr. Depp is up now um, in his case in chief, we are going to be playing the video deposition of Mr. Patterson. We will pause the video. Um, and then when one of Ms. Hurd's exhibits comes up. No, no, or, I'm, I'm sorry. The deposition, the person, it, just one time. When that deposition, we just testimony is once. We understand that. Are you you're doing? Then you're going to pause right now, and then you're going to do it. I'm just confused. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Let me be a little bit more clear. We're going to pause the video deposition uh -huh. of of Mr. Patterson okay. to allow Ms. Hurd's counsel to publish okay. the exhibit, which is also okay. a video, All right. <laughs> surveillance video. I know it's confusing. Okay. It's going to be a little difficult. Okay. Right. So we ask that the court perhaps um, remove the publishing for Mr. Depp's counsel's table and allow Ms. Hurd's counsel to publish that exhibit, which is a surveillance video, and play that. Okay. Each, each side has taken responsibility okay. of the clips that we they would that. like to play. Yeah. If that but makes how, sense. But how many times is this going to happen? <laughs> how many do you have? We have, um, we have six, Your Honor. You have there's, six. There's six clips, which probably the longest is less than two minutes long. Okay. So you'll pause it when he, when the witness is watching the video, we're going to watch the video. Okay. All right. And how long is this video? I believe the entire deposition is about an hour, one hour and 48 minutes. One hour and 48 minutes. And okay. um, with the exhibits, I anticipate it might take us till the end of the day. Okay. Um, but I no no promises that, about that. That's fine. Um, I still need the exhibit numbers. Okay. If we could Would you like to read them into? So I, I can read them. Can read that that's them. fine. If you just if you would uh, precursor with whose exhibit it is. So I have to, I have two lists. So I just want to make sure okay, I get it. Okay, sure. Uh, Go ahead. All right. So I'll give you our, I'll give you ours. Okay. Um, it would be six seventy. Six seventy. Six seventy one. Six seventy one. Six seventy two. Six seventy two. Six seventy three. Six seventy three. I'm sorry, I'm going out of order here now. Six six six. That's okay. 666. 680. 680. 681. 681. 682. 682. 683. 683. 684. Okay. 685. 686. 687. Okay. 688. 668. 690. 691, 692-693-693-694-695-696-725-697-29-743-745 746, 744, 750, 751, 752, 753, 755, 780 G, 780 R, 780 X, 789 A, 789B, 789G, 
789H, 789L, 789N, 789R, 974. And I believe we had 1041, which I think was the what actually came in from your uh, today, the the, um, the plans for the ECB. I think that's the same thing, but it was 1041. And I'm not sure if you're objecting to that. No. No, so 1041. Two. Okay. <laughs> just want to all make right. sure. So you're entering all of those into evidence and there's no objection, correct? Well, Your Honor, I just want to confirm one thing with counsel. Sure. Um, may I confirm? Sure. Him that's sure. Um, this doesn't include the cover of the right. So just to confirm. Confirmed. Okay. Yeah. As long as they're all Eastern Columbia surveillance videos, Your Honor, we have no objections. Okay. Which they are. Which they are. So they're all entered except into for the, Except for the plan, which was that one I just right. talked about. Yes. Okay. So they're, those are all entered into evidence then. All right. And yes, ma'am, yours. And Your Honor, just short circuit this <laughs> for the court. Um, our Eastern Columbia building surveillance videos are um, exhibit numbers 250 through 336. All right, so exhibits 250 through 336. That's no correct. objection to those exhibits, correct? Assuming they are all the Eastern Columbia surveillance videos, we have no objection. Yes. Okay, so uh, plaintiff's exhibits 250 through 336 are entered into evidence. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, would, would your honor like to know the 10 exhibits that we were going to be playing for the jury? No, that's okay. okay. I, they're all in evidence. That's all I need okay. to know. We don't Thank need you, to pull them up, so you're going to handle okay. that. Yes. All right. The only thing about this is there's going to be duplicates. I don't know whether we want to try to sort that through. They're in evidence, so okay. that's... that's okay. it's been I'm not going to ring that bell. That's right. Okay. Uh, could you put the big TV up, though, before we get the jury back in? Just since it's going to be a deposition with testimony, we're going to go ahead and put the big TV up, so. If it works. <laughs> Could you speak a little louder? I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought the deposition video came through the other screen. I was just. I think it comes through here too. Yeah. Oh, it does. Okay. Great. Yeah. We, we, we'll, when you have a remote witness, the remote witness will stay up there. Right. And then you can use those screens as well. But when you're using deposition, we can still see it over okay. here. Okay. Fantastic. Thank we'll you. Just publish it to the big screen. If you want to set up before the jury comes out, just to make sure you have the person. <laughs> Let's just make sure it's all working before we get the jury. And this, oh, you didn't put it on there. All right, it seems like it's all working. Okay. No, though, that's fine. All right, are we ready for the jury then? Okay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. All right, your next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, plaintiffs call Brandon Patterson. He is the corporate designee of the Eastern Columbia Building by deposition designations. All right. Patterson. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first one that we have of, of, of a few um, where they, they already have been uh, deposed. Uh, and so you're going to see them on a recording, OK? No volume. Do you know that 
Do you have an audio connection attached to? Try it one more time. Could you push play one more time? General manager. Can you turn it up? For what? Uh, if you could please state your name and address for the record. Sure, Brandon Patterson, 849 South Broadway, Los Angeles, California, 90014. And if you could please state your occupation. General manager. For what? Uh, I am the general manager for the Eastern Columbia HOA in Los Angeles. And how long have you been in that position? Uh, I've been here at the building six years. Okay. Were you there in 2016? Yes. Um, and are you here under a subpoena as the corporate designee for action property management? Yes. Okay, and if you could please pull up exhibit one and just scroll to page 15 of the PDF, please. Does this look like a copy of the, of the subpoena that you received? Um, yes. Is it okay if I call your building ECB? Is yes. Uh, is it your understanding that ECB has produced these three categories of documents and films? Yes. Please go to exhibit two and scroll to page eight. And does this look like the topics of the of the deposition of a subpoena for testimony? Okay. Um, is it your understanding that uh, you're the most knowledgeable person on these topics? I am the most knowledgeable within action property management as it relates to these items. Are you responsible for, for managing any of the records or managing, preserving any of the records and videos at, at uh, action property management? Uh, specifically as it relates to Eastern Columbia, um, this is the only property and building for action that I manage um so action as a whole i i can't speak for that but as as for ecb yes thanks and this whole this whole deposition will be just referring to uh ecb related to action property management <clears throat> um what was your role in, in locating the videos responsive to the subpoena <clears throat> to the to the subpoena uh, the videos had been saved um, from the original case. Um, I don't recall the exact year that was. I think this is number four now. Um, so I provided the video that was requested um, that had been saved as the only videos um, that were that were requested and saved. And um, who, who saved them? Was that you or, or someone at action property management um i had initially worked on saving them when i received the first mm -hmm. list and i guess i'm i'm i don't know if you're referring to the first set of videos that was ever requested or subsequent subpoenas i guess as this refers to that were already saved and i just transferred the already saved documents so we'll get into into more details. Um, but when was the first time you saved um, security footage relating to ACB as in response to a subpoena? Like I said, I don't recall the exact year. Um, it was the first case um, between Depp and Heard um, as a response to subpoenas that we had received from both parties. Uh, and what, what was your role in preserving those videos from, from that first time until now? Can you expand on what you mean by preserving? Sure. D did uh, were, were these videos kept securely in the same format at yes. ACP? 
And were you responsible for making sure that they were kept securely and in the same format at ACB? Yes. Um, how many cameras are there at ECB in, in 2016? <clears throat> um, I don't recall the exact number. We've since switched out the entire system um, and expanded on it. Um, I believe we doubled the cameras, um, which we currently have 40, 44. So I would be speculating, but I think it's probably around 20, 22 or so. And where, where in 2016 were the cameras positioned? Uh, throughout the common areas. And did, did ECB take them as a matter of course, sort of all day, 24 hours a day? Uh, the recordings were 24 seven. Um, the concierge staff um, periodically does review them. Um, just as part of their daily duties, uh, but the video footage is recorded onto a DVR um, in a, back then I believe it was like a 20 day period before it was written over. Is it correct that you're not represented by an attorney? I am not. Uh, did you review any documents or videos before the deposition? I did not. Have you ever communicated with Mr. Depp's former attorney, Mr. Waldman? Uh, yes. And did Mr. Waldman, do you know if he drafted a declaration for you in 2016? Yes. yes. Is Action Property Management, I believe you said this earlier, is, is it the property management company for ECB? Yes. Is it your understanding that in 2016, Depp owned the top floor penthouses in, in ECB, penthouses one through five? Yes. And are you aware of whether Amber Heard was a resident at ECB in, in 2016? Yes. How many times have you seen Amber Heard personally? Um, maybe, I mean, I would, be guessing my best guess would be maybe half a dozen to a dozen times. Do you remember when those times were? Like what year? Um, I don't recall the exact year, but likely 2016. Um, so moving to May 21st of 2016, uh, are you aware that officers were called to the penthouse of ECB on that day? Yes, I am aware. Were you there the day that the officers were called to ECB in May of 2016? I was not at the building when officers were called. Do you have any firsthand knowledge of, of, of uh, why the officers were called on May 21st, 2016? Firsthand, no, I do not. Did you see Amber at all on May 21st? Uh, not that I recall. Did you see Amber on May 22nd, 2016? Uh, not that I recall. Did you see Amber on May 23rd, 2016? Um, the timeline is 2016. I, I don't recall the specifics of those dates specifically. Can you say, can you testify to whether you, you saw Amber Heard at all the week of May 21st, 2016 personally? Uh, not, I, I don't recall the dates now. Did you personally interact with Mr. Depp at ECB in 2016? No, I never did. Have you seen Mr. Depp on video footage in 2016? Yes. Could you could please bring up, um, exhibit three, please. How would you describe Mr. Depp's behavior in that video? I would describe it as animated. And do you have any, in the times that you've seen Mr. Depp at ECB, did you ever observe Mr. Depp in an animated manner like you saw in the video? Uh, I do recall a video of Mr. Depp in the elevator, um, I guess 
in an animated state. And was that in 2016? Yes. And do you have any familiarity with, um, have you ever seen Mr. Depp appear angry in the times you've seen him at ECB? I wouldn't say angry, I, I use the term animated. And what does the term animated mean to you? What I saw in the video. When were you first, Mr. Patterson, when were you first contacted for video footage after the May 21st police call to the building? I don't ex recall the exact time frame. Do you remember who contacted you uh, about the May 2016 video footage? Who first contacted you? Uh, I do not recall. Do you know who selected what copy to preserve and what copies what to preserve? Uh, the attorneys from both sides uh, submitted a list of video times and dates to be preserved. And do you remember uh, what times and dates those were, roughly? Uh, I, I, I don't have a, a time frame now. Do you have a rough time frame of what, what the videos that were preserved, what times those covered? Um, my rough recollection is that May 2016 time frame. Was it after the May 21st incident, that time frame? Yes. Um, and do you know what role Mr. Depp's law uh, lawyers played in the selection process? The attorneys came to uh, the office here, uh, set up um, a viewing area, um, reviewed video footage, took notes based on that review um, and those dates and times were provided to retrieve the video and save. And do you remember which attorneys came, either their names or who they were, to came to review the footage? Uh, I don't recall. There's attorneys from both sides that came very close together, and I don't recall uh, who, who or what side they were on. And was all of the footage that they selected preserved? Yes. And were all of those videos that were preserved taken in the ordinary course of ECB's business operations? Can you rephrase that? Sure. It's, it's, it's ordinary, is it not, for ECB to have these cameras rolling and the, the videos that were, were preserved were from those cameras that were rolling in the ordinary course of business? Yes, correct. And do you know how many video clips um, ECB preserved pursuant to the, the requests of firm attorneys? Uh, I don't recall the exact number. It was whatever was on the subpoena. We provided exactly what was on there. Does the number 87 ring a bell? For Maybe, how many yes. yes. Uh, and, and do you know where the videos were maintained? from 2016 until today? Uh, they were on a, uh, a portable drive here in my office. At ECB? Yes. And uh, how were they maintained? It was on a portable hard drive. And as far as you know, are the, that is, are, is that in the same condition that it was in 2016? To my knowledge, yes. And uh, were, were the 87 videos preserved on three DVD discs or in some other format? So through the subpoenas there, the videos were provided um, to the different teams. Um, I vaguely remember CDs. Um, they were.
aren't stored on CDs for purposes here. Um, I just have the, the portable hard drive. Are there any more video footage other than those 87 clips that has been preserved? No. And what happened to any other video footage that was not preserved? Like I had mentioned earlier, the DVR has a capacity of so many days and it rewrites over itself. And um, just for clarity, how did, I just wanna make it clear, how did you decide what May 2016 video to preserve? The only videos that were preserved were the ones called out via the subpoena by the various uh, law firms or the two law firms. And do you know why there's no footage from May 23rd, 2016? I do not. Uh, and you mentioned that uh, both sides pr requested preservation of the video footage, is that is that right? Yes, correct. Um, is your understanding that the press at some point became interested in, in getting statements from ECB relating to the May 21st incident? Yes. Uh, did the press ask ECB or its employees for, for, for statements? Yes. And uh, what's the policy of APM or ECB with respect to press statements about residents? The policy is that we do not give statements to press. And did Amber ever ask you about that? Yes, she did. In 2016, uh, do you know if, if Rocky Pennington and Josh Drew lived in one of the penthouses at ECB? Yes. And did you ever see Rocky with Amber? Yes. If we could pull up exhibit four, please. Uh, Mr. Patterson, does this refresh your recollection about which penthouse uh, Rocky P Pennington lived in? Yes. Um, Mr. Mr. Uh, Patter Patterson, I'd like to go to the video footage now and go through some video footage. Um, and let's start with exhibit five, please. Uh, in particular, around timestamp 18, 55, 19. Okay. All right, we'll do that.
Okay. Mr. Patterson, do you recognize this this area? Yes. Um, and where is it? This is the mezzanine vestibule between the building and the parking garage. And do you know if you or someone else at ECB was responsible for pulling this security footage and keeping it at ECB? I did pull some video early on. Um, however, the task was very overwhelming and took away from my daily duties. Um, so the task was uh, sent off to an outside party uh, to pull all the videos based on the subpoena list. And what was the outside party's name? I, I don't recall offhand. But it, was it at was it at the direction of of you or ACB? Yes. Um, to assist you with time, or, or is that why? Yes, I I did not have the time to go through all of the video footage to record it. Sure. Do do, do the ACB video cameras have time and date stamps as a matter of course? Yes. And. In your experience, are those time and date stamps relatively accurate? Relatively accurate, yes. And did you recognize the men in that exhibit? Can you replay it, please? Sure. And while we're waiting for the men um, to appear, uh, how would you describe the, the quality of the, this vid these videos? Compared to our new updated cameras, um, not as clear. And can, can you be more specific about not clear? Would you consider these to be grainy? I would say this video here in the pause state does appear to be somewhat grainy. And does it appear to be just a little bit blurry? Yes, this video as I see it now looks a little blurry. And did you recognize the men in this video clip? Yes, I, I do recognize Mr. Depp. Um, the first gentleman looks familiar. I can't place him at the moment. Um, and do you have any reason to believe that that, that the date and timestamp are not accurate? It does seem consistent with the timestamping um, of the video. So unless it was somehow altered, um, I would say it appears to be accurate. And the video camera that, that you preserved in your office at ECB since 2016 has not been altered. Is that correct? Correct. Let's move to exhibit six, please. You recognize where this is? Yes. And where is it? This is the uh, mezzanine level again. Um, vestibule, the mail room is directly behind it. Uh, leading to the elevator vestibule. And that, does that look like it accur accurately portrays the scene? This shot accurately depicts the area, correct. And do you recognize those men? As I previously stated, I do recognize uh, Mr. Depp. The other ones I do not. And did the date and time stamp look uh, accurate? Yes. Um, if we could please go to exhibit seven. All right. Thank you.
Maybe switch, switch back. back. Okay. Um, and do you recognize uh, where this is, Mr. Patterson? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, and does that look like a, a clip from um, the surveillance video in the elevator at ECB? Yes. And does it accurately portray the scene? When you, I, I, I don't know what you mean by scene. Does, does it look like ECB, like the elevator at ECB? Yes. And is this, is the quality of this a little bit grainy as well? As it's displayed right now, yes. Um, and do the time, the date and time stamps look accurate like ECB keeps in the regular course of business? Yes. And um, could we please play the video so we can see who's getting on? And do you recognize those people getting on the elevator, Mr. Pattinson? Yes, I do recognize Mr. Depp. And uh, is smoking permitted on elevators at ECB? No, it's not. Let's move to Exhibit 8, please. Do you recognize this, this uh, as ECB video footage? Yes. And do you recognize the men on the elevator? As I previously mentioned, uh, Mr. Depp only. And um, do those date and time stamps look accurate? Yes. How would you describe Mr. Depp's movements on this elevator? Uh, I'll use the description animated again. Is, is he also swaying from side to side? Does this footage generally look like the footage that, that you preserved from 2016? Yes. Let's move to exhibit. And do you recognize this area? Yes. What is what what is it? Uh, this is the same shot that was previously shown. Uh, the mezzanine vestibule. And is it shot from one of the ECB surveillance cameras? Yes. And does this look like one of the ones that was preserved since 2016? Yes. Um, and do the date and time stamps look accurate as far as you know? Yes. Um, and were you responsible for pulling this security footage generally? Generally, yes. And do you recognize the people in, the, in that video? Excuse me. Uh, I do recognize Mr. Depp. And what's Mr. Depp holding? It appears to be a jacket. And how would you describe how he's holding it? 
with his left hand. And if we could please move to exhibit 11. And do you recognize this as, as ECB surveillance footage? Yes. And where was that footage taken? Uh, this is back in the mezzanine vestibule uh, between the building and the garage. Say the last part, vestibule what? Between the building and the garage. And was this one of the videos that was preserved since 2016 by ECB? I don't recall this specific clip, but yes, this, this is video that was preserved. And did the date and time stamps look accurate? Like they would be on ECP footage? Yes. Do you recognize those people? Uh, I rec recognize Mr. Depp. And does Mr. Depp appear to be leaving the building? That would be the pathway from the building into the garage. And does this look like tr uh, true and accurate footage from the ECB video surveillance preserved since 2016? Yes. Moving right along to exhibit 12, please. And where is this uh, video, Mr. Patterson? Uh, this video is the call box at the lobby entrance on Broadway. And do you recognize that as security footage from one of the ECB uh, surveillance cameras that's been preserved since 2016? Yes. And does the date and time stamp look accurate to you? Yes. And move to exhibit 13, please. And do you recognize? Uh, where this is? Yes. Where? Uh, this is in the main lobby of the building. And does that look like a surveillance clip from one of the ECB surveillance cameras that's been preserved since 2016? Yes. And uh, it says May 21st, 2016 at 2053. Does that look like an accurate date and time stamp from the ECB footage? Yes. And that looks like a true and accurate copy of the surveillance has been preserved? Yes. Moving to exhibit 14, please. You recognize this clip? Yes. 
And it, does it look like it's from one of ECB's security footage cameras that's been preserved since 2016? Yes. And where was this footage taken? Uh, this is the shot of the front desk. And would you agree that the footage is also a little bit grainy? As it is displayed now, yes. Um, and do the date and time stamps look accurate um, to you? Yes. And do you recognize this as uh, surveillance footage from one of the ECB cameras that's been preserved since 2016? Yes. Um, do you recognize either of the officers? I recognize them as officers. Um, and does the date and time stamp look accurate as far as you know? Yes. Move to exhibit 16, please. Does this also appear to be a um, ECB surveillance camera footage? Yes. And do you recognize the per that person who just left the elevator? I do not. Um, and does this generally appear to be one of the ones that have been preserved since 2016 at ECB? Yes. And as far as you know, does the date and time stamp look accurate? Yes. And for all of these clips that you've seen, they look, they, do they appear to you to be true and accurate copies of the footage that have been preserved? These seem very grainy and slow to me um, from what I remember. But this, these are taken from Eastern Columbia video cameras during this time. And preserved since that time at ECB? Correct. And they were preserved in the same condition? Yes. Um, can we please pull up exhibit 17? And do you recognize this as a clip uh, from one of the ECB surveillance cameras that's been preserved since 2016? Yes. And as far as you know, is the date and time stamp accurate? Yes. And does that accurately portray the, the elevator scene at ECB? Yes. Um, and can we move to uh, exhibit 18, please? But do you recognize this is ECB uh, security footage that's been preserved at ECB since 2016? Yes. And it looks like an accurate uh, copy of what was preserved far as you know as far as I know yes and the date and timestamp as far as you know look accurate yes please move to exhibit 19 and mr. Patterson do you know whether or not any of these uh, timestamps are a few seconds off here or there or not I do believe there uh, is a few second time discrepancy And do you know what? Do you know why there would be a few second time discrepancy, or? I don't know the reason behind it now. Okay. Um, and um, did you recognize that video clip as one of the videos that has been preserved at ECB since 2016? Yes. And and does that appear to be an accurate copy of one of the surveillance copies that have been preserved? Yes. And as far as you know, that the date and timestamp is, is reasonably accurate, you know, with a couple seconds uh, margin. Yes. And please move to exhibit 20. And do you recognize this as one of the videos that have been uh, taken at ECB, one of by a surveillance camera at ECB? Yes. And is the, are these one of the videos that have been preserved by ECB uh, since 2016? Yes. And as far as you know, 
uh, within a, a few seconds. Is that date and time stamp accurate? As far as I know, yes. And does it appear to be two officers leaving the leaving ECB? Yes. And move to exhibit 21, please. Do you recognize where this is? Yes. And, and what does it look like to you? Uh, this is the same shot from the kiosk camera outside of the lobby on Broadway. Is it shot from one of the surveillance cameras at ECB? Yes. And does that appear to be one of the clips that's, that uh, has been preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. And as far as you know, is the date and time stamp accurate as far as you know? Yes. Exhibit 22. Can we move to that, please? And does this appear to be, uh, this clip appear to be taken from one of the ECB security cameras? Yes. And which camera? Uh, this is the lobby, one of the lobby cameras. And does this appear to be one of the clips that was uh, preserved at ECB since 2016? Yes. Um, and did the, as far as you know, is the date and time stamp uh, accurate? Yes, within a few seconds. And were those two officers walking in in, in this video? Yes, those appear to be two officers. Or does this look like how the lobby, does this look like um, how the lobby looks in the video's surveillance per preserve? Uh, by ECB. Yes. Let's move to exhibit 23. Do you, do you recognize this uh, as video footage taken from one of the ECB security cameras? Yes. And does this appear to be one of the clips that's been preserved by ECB uh, since 2016? Yes. Uh, and as far as you know, are the date and time stamps accurate within a few seconds? Yes. And do those appear to be officers? Talking to the concierge? Yes. And move to exhibit 24, please. And do you recognize this as uh, video footage taken by one of the ECB uh, security cameras? Yes. And was this one of the clips that were, take, were taken by ECB and preserved uh, since 2016? Yes. Um, and and uh, as far as you know, within a few seconds, are the date and time stamps accurate? Yes. Can we please go to exhibit 27? And do you recognize this video? Is one of the videos from the ECB security footage that have been preserved since 2016 by ECB? Yes. Uh, as far as you know, is the date and time stamp accurate within a few seconds? False for X purpose. Uh, and move to 20, exhibit 28, please. Do you recognize this video as one of the ECB surveillance videos? Yes. Uh, and which 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 surveillance video? Which which part of the building? Uh, this is the lobby. Okay. And does this appear to be one of the clips that has been taken and preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. And as far as you know, are the date and time stamps accurate within a few seconds? Yes. And um, do those look like two officers in the lobby to you? Yes. Move to 29. And do you recognize this 
uh, video is taken from one of the ECB security cameras? Yes. Um, and was this one of the clips uh, that have been taken and preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. Um, and as far as you know, is the date and time stamp accurate within a few seconds? Yes. I mean, this appears to be an accurate copy of what was preserved. Yes. And move to exhibit 30, please. And do you recognize this as footage taken from one of the ECB security cameras? Yes. And it does appear to be one of the clips that has been taken and preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. Um, and that appears to be an accurate copy of what was preserved? Yes. And as far as you know, is the date and time stamp accurate within a few seconds? Yes. May we please go to exhibit 30? And do you recognize this as one of the uh, video clips from ECB video surveillance? Uh, yes. And is this the elevator camera? One of, yes. And do you recognize who's on the elevator? Uh, it appears to be Amber. And um, does this look like one of uh, the video uh, clips that have been taken and preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. And as far as you know, within a few seconds, is the date and time stamp accurate? Yes. Um, can we please move to exhibit 30? <laughs> and does this appear to be one of the video clips taken from the ECB security footage? Yes. Um, and does this appear to be one of the clips that was taken and preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. And as far as you know, are the date and time stamps accurate within a few seconds? Yes. And while we're waiting for someone to appear, do you, do you recognize the person at the front desk, if you can see him? And do you recognize who's walking into the video now? I do recognize that as Amber, I trying to get a, a, face, a facial uh, recognition of the person at the desk. Can you see him now? Yes. And who's that? His name is Cornelius. Do you know why Mr. Harrell and, and Amber would be going around that corner? Uh, the package room is like around the corner. And does this look like one of the video clips that's been preserved and taken by ECB since 2016? Yes. And does the date and time stamp uh, look accurate as within a few seconds as far as you know? Yes. And does this look like an accurate clip um, from the ECB footage? Yes. Um, I'd like to move this uh, in as exhibit 31. Uh, and move to exhibit 
32, please? And do you recognize uh, who's walking through the picture in this video? Yes. Who is it? Amber Heard. And does this look like a video clip uh, taken from one of the ECB surveillance cameras? Yes. And does this look like one of the videos that, that was taken and preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. And as far as you know, are the date and time stamps accurate within a few seconds? Yes. Um, I'd like to move to exhibit 33, please. And does this look, look like uh, video footage taken from one of the ECB surveillance cameras? Yes. And does this, look, does this look like one of the clips taken and preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. And as far as you know, are the date and time stamps accurate within a few seconds? Yes. I'd like to move to admit this as Exhibit 33. And do you recognize who's in this video right now? Yes. Who is it? Amber Heard. And where is she? This is the service corridor outside of the package room. Okay, and if we could please rewind the tape a little bit and see who Amber was with. Do you recognize that person? Yes, that's Cornelius. And what's his last name? Powell? And, Arrow? and was he walking out where was he where was he walking out from the package room where is this in ecb this is on the main level service corridor and would you agree with me that this footage is also a little bit grainy yes if you could please i'd like to move to admit to exhibit 33 uh, and if we could please move to exhibit 34. And do you recognize this as one of the ECB security camera uh, footage clips? Yes. And this appear to be one of the video footage clips taken and preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. As far as you know, is the date and time stamp accurate within a few seconds? Yes. And do you recognize who's in this video? Uh, it appears to be Amber Heard. Uh, and do you know where this video is? Can you expand on that? Sure. Is it in an elevator? In ECB? Yes. Um, and can we go back to that exhibit, please, just for a minute? And can we go to roughly timestamp 18, 22, 26? Would you agree with me that the video uh, footage here is a little bit grainy? Yes. And does it look a little bit fuzzy to you? Yes. And can we please move to exhibit 35? And does this look like uh, video footage from one of the ECB security cameras? Yes. And does this appear to be one of the clips that was taken and preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. And as far as you know, did the date and time stamps look accurate within a few seconds? Yes. If we could please move to timestamp, let's see, 184129. And do you recognize who just walked in the elevator? Uh, it appears to be Amber. I'm not sure who the gentleman is. Does that video appear a little bit grainy to you? As, as it's displayed now. Um, and if we could please move to exhibit 
think we're on 36. And is it, does this appear to be footage from one of the security cameras at ECB? Yes. And who, who, who just walked through the footage? Uh, Amber Herb and a gentleman. And does this appear to be one of the clips that was taken and preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. As far as you know, uh, is the date, stamp, and time reasonably accurate within a few seconds? Yes. And would you agree with me that that also is a little bit grainy in that footage? Yes, as it's displayed now. Um, and if we could please move to exhibit 37. And does this appear to be a video camera from one of ECB's video cameras? Yes. And does this appear to be one of the clips that was taken and preserved by ECB since uh, 2016? Yes. And as far as you know, is the date and time stamp accurate within a few seconds? Yes. And did you recognize who walked through that <coughs> video? Amber Hurt and an unknown gentleman. And is this video also a little bit grainy as it appears? As it appears now, yes. Um, I'd like to move in exhibit 37. And please uh, move to exhibit 38. And does this appear to be video taken from one of the security cameras at ECB? Yes. And does this appear to be one of the clips that was taken and preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. And as far as you know, is the date and time stamp accurate within a, reason, within a few seconds? Yes. Uh, and if we could, let's see. Go to 2256, please, a timestamp wise. And do you recognize who, who's getting on the elevator? I cannot see her face, but it appears to be Amber Heard. Um. I move to admit this is 38, and then we can move to uh, 39, please. Does this look like a true and accurate copy of or surveillance footage from one of the ECB cameras? Yes. And does this look like one of the clips that was taken and preserved in 2016 by ECB? Yes. And when I say by ECB, I, I mean either you or someone under your direction, like the contractor you, you spoke of. Is that your understanding? Yes. Um, and I'd like to move this in as exhibit 38, I'm oh, sorry, 39, please. Um, and if, and do, do you know who is working behind the desk in this video? Yes. And who's that? Uh, Alex Romero. Okay, can we move to uh, exhibit 40, please? And does this appear to be a, clip, a video from one of the ECB security cameras? Yes. And does this appear to be one of the clips that was taken and preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. And as far as you know, is the date and time stamp accurate within a few seconds? Yes. I'd like to move this in as exhibit 40, please. Um, and if we could go to, to timestamp 21-17-33, please. And if we could move, oh yeah, thanks. And do you recognize who's getting on the elevator? Yes. And who is it? Uh, Amber, Rocky, and her sister, Whitney. And um, would you agree with me that the video footage is a little bit grainy in this? Yes.
Yes, as is displayed at the moment. Um, and does that date and time stamp look accurate within a few seconds as far as you know? Yes. And does that appear to be one of the clips that was taken and preserved by ACB since 2016? Yes. I'd like to move to admit that as, as exhibit 40, please. Uh, and move to, to uh, 41, please. All right, Council, could you pause it for a moment? Let's just go ahead and... All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take a 15 minute break till four o'clock, okay? All right, thank you, go ahead. Come back at four o'clock then, okay?
We ready for the jury then? Okay. We're ready for the jury. That's <laughs> very You may continue. Thank you. And does this also look like one of the clips uh, taken from one of the ECB security cam cameras? Yes. And does this appear to be one of the clips that was taken and preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. And would you agree with me uh, that the quality is also grainy and as it appears in this video? Yes. As far as you know, is the date and time stamp look accurate uh, within a few seconds? Yes. And do you recognize the people in this video? Yes. And who are they? Uh, Amber, Rocky, and Whitney. And move to 42. And does this appear to be one of the video cameras from ECB security footage? Yes. Uh, and does this appear to be one of the videos taken and preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. And as far as you know, is the date and time stamp uh, accurate within a few seconds? Yes. And if we could please let's see, go to 11.32 and 11.35. Uh, do you recognize this as, as a clip from 2016, uh, one of the ones that was taken and preserved by, by ECB? Yes. And as far as you know, the date and time stamp is it accurate within a few seconds? Yes. Uh, move to admit this as Exhibit 42, please, and move to, and uh, let's move to Exhibit, uh, uh, sorry, 42, and move to Exhibit 43, please.
Does this look like footage from one of the ECB security cameras? Yes. And does this appear to be one of the clips that was taken and preserved by ECB from uh, two, since 2016? Yes. As far as you know, is the date and time stamp accurate within a few seconds? Yes. And can you tell me where this is? Or do you remember where that was in the building? That is the mezzanine vestibule between the building and the garage. Okay. Um, and if we could move to exhibit 44, please. And does this look like one of the videos taken from one of the ECB security cameras? Yes. Um, and does, does this look like one of the clips that was taken and preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. Uh, and as far as you know, is the date and time stamp accurate within a few seconds? Yes. And do you recognize who's in the photo? I mean, who's in the video? Uh, it appears to be Amber and Trinity Esparza. Trinity what? Trinity Esparza. Um, and can you rewind that footage, please? Um, and... Does Miss does does uh, Amber Heard have a sister? Yes. Do you know if that's Amber Heard's sister versus Amber Heard? Could you tell? Uh, in this video. Uh, not 100% now. Um, and would you agree that the video is, is also a little bit fuzzy in this clip? As it appears now, yeah, it's uh, grainy. Um, and does this look like an accurate clip um, taken and preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. Um, and if we could please move to Exhibit 46. As far as you know, did uh, ECB 
uh, preserve all the footage that uh, Mr. Depp's attorneys or and Amber's attorneys asked you to preserve? Yes. And did you, from your understanding, do you understand that the attorneys, uh, some attorneys came and actually were involved in the selection process of videos, ECB in May of 2016? Yes. Um, and moving to this exhibit, uh, 45, does this appear to be a, a video clip from a, from a, uh, one of the elevator surveillance cameras in ECB? Yes. And does this appear to be one of the clips that was taken and preserved by ACB since 2016? Yes. And as far as you know, is the date and time stamps accurate within a few seconds? Yes. Um, and I'd like to move to admit this is exhibit uh, 45 and or 46. Um, and do you recognize the people in this? Uh, it appears to be Amber and Rocky. And would you agree that the footage is a little bit fuzzy? Yes, as it's displayed now. Um, I'd like to move to admit that as exhibit 46 and move on to exhibit 47, please. And does this appear to be a video clip from one of the ECB security cameras? Yes. And does this appear to be one of the clips taken and preserved by ECB uh, since 2016? Yes. And as far as you know, is the time and date stamp accurate within a few seconds? Yes. Would you agree that the video footage is, is a little bit fuzzy in this clip as well? Yes, as it's displayed. And let's see. And this looks like one of the clips that was taken and preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. Um, and as far as you know, the date and time stamp look accurate within a few seconds? Yes. So I believe we're on exhibit 48. Um, does this appear to be a, a clip from one of the ECB video cameras? Yes. And does it appear to be one of the clips that was taken and preserved by ACB since 2016? Yes. And as far as you know, is the date and time stamps uh, accurate within a few seconds? Yes. And do you recognize the woman who's uh, about to get on the elevator getting on? Uh, which it looks like Amber's waiting to get on. Rocky just came in. And Whitney's over in the corner. I don't. I don't know the other two. Okay. Um, and can you? Is would you agree that this footage is also a little bit fuzzy? Yes, as it's displayed now. And that looks like an accurate clip uh, from one of the ones that was taken and preserved by ECB since 2016. Yes. If we could please pull up Exhibit 49. Mr. Patterson, are you familiar with the layout at the uh, penthouse level of the Eastern Columbia Building? Yes. And uh, this is Exhibit 49 that I'm showing you. And uh, does this look like what you uh, understand the layout to be of the penthouse three first level? Does this look to you like um, what your understanding is of the layout of penthouse three the first level yes and if we could scroll down please does that look like the layout of the second level of penthouse three yes uh, move to admit exhibit 49 please and can we please move to exhibit 50 
Uh, and could we zoom in a little bit, please? Mr. Patterson, do you recognize this as uh, the layout of the penthouse level? Uh, nothing's labeled, um, generally, I guess. Does it, that look like the pool's in the right spot on that exhibit? Uh, yes. And does, does, from what you can tell, does everything else look as you would expect the layout to be in your familiarity with the layout and your experience? Uh, yes, generally. Going back to the video clips, and we can walk. There, there's a couple I'm saving to the to the end to see if there's time. Um, uh, but for the ones that I've show, for the ones that I've showed you, um, is your understanding that those are all accurate copies of ECB footage that uh, were taken and preserved by ECB since 2015? Uh, yes. Um, and it, again, by, t by taken by ECB, I mean by you or someone under your direction in the regular course of business. Is that your understanding? Yes. Um, and is it correct that, that ECB has produced all of the video footage that uh, had been subpoenaed by attorneys? Yes, that's correct. Um, so to the extent that, that footage has not been produced, is it fair to say that that footage no longer exists or do you have another explanation? Can you expand on that, please? Sure. The, the, um, so there's, my understanding is that you testified that there's 87 clips that have been preserved. Is that right? Yes. Um, and that the date and timestamps are, are uh, reasonably accurate to your knowledge on those? Yes, to my knowledge. Extent that there are any missing days or times, is it fair to say that that footage no longer exists? Or is there any other footage that could be produced? Outside of the videos that were requested, um, that's correct. No, everything else would have been written over at this point. Okay, so there's no other videos other than those that, that have been produced to your knowledge? Yes, correct. Okay. Um, and I, I believe you testify that ECB has, has currently has a new and improved video system. Is that right? Am I remembering that correctly? Yes. And back in 2016, uh, would you agree with me that the video quality was uh, somewhat grainy as i believe that we've talked about in some of the clips yes compared to today's yes um and was was uh was it also a little bit fuzzy in the clips that we've reviewed today yes as they were uh, displayed on the screen um and is it correct that you did not um see amber in person yourself uh may 21st or the or the several days after I don't recall which day or days she came into the office, um, but I did see her on those two occasions. Um, outside of that, no, I didn't see her in person. Okay, um, with that last answer, you don't recall which days you saw her, is that correct? I don't remember the specific date of those uh, interactions. So would you be able to testify based on your knowledge whether Amber is wearing makeup uh, the week of the 21st of 2016? Not that I recall. 
And if we could please go back, um, since we have a little bit of extra time, and watch the video that we couldn't hear the audio on. There's something wrong with it, but I believe the audio is fixed. So if we could please go back to Exhibit 3. Mr. Patterson, I believe you testified when we first saw this video without audio uh, that you described Mr. Behave Mr. Depp's behavior as animated. <clears throat> is that right? Yes. After, after Now that the audio is back, would you still describe uh, Mr. Depp's behavior is animated yeah i think he's still animated but with the audio um i would say upset about something and ha based on your um the times you've seen mr depp at ecb have you seen him upset about similarly upset uh in the building there was one video of Mr. Depp in the elevator, um, seemed, like I said earlier, animated. W the one you're referring to, is that the one where you said Mr. Depp was swaying side to side, or are you thinking of a different one? Yes, when he was swaying side to side. Do you know who Mr. Waldman is? Yes. Who is he? Uh, Johnny Depp's attorney. Did Mr. Waldman contact you about this case? Yes. What did Mr. Waldman want when he called you? Um, can you quick clarify, just because um, there's been several cases. I don't recall which case Mr. Waldman was involved in. Um, so I don't believe he's reached out regarding this particular one, to my knowledge. Which um, of the other cases that you've been contacted by Mr. Waldman about? Um, I don't recall the specific one, um, but he did reach out to whichever one he was representing at that time. Um, and I believe there's a subpoena that had followed. And did you say that Mr. Waldman contacted you in two prior cases? I don't recall which case it was in regard to. And did you talk to Mr. Waldman on the phone? I, I don't recall. And did you communicate with Mr. Waldman by email? Yes. Did Mr. Waldman uh, prepare a um, draft declaration for you? Yes. Is it fair to say that you cannot testify one way or another about whether Mr. Depp committed domestic violence against Amber? I cannot. If we could please turn to exhibit nine. <clears throat> and does this look like a um, video camera from the ECB video footage? This is where you want to stop. Okay.
And does this look like one uh, taken and preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. And as far as you know, is the date and time stamp accurate within a few seconds? Yes. And can we please take that down and bring up 10? And does this look like a, a video from one of the ECB security cameras? Yes. And does this, this look like one of the clips that was taken and preserved by ECB uh, since 2016? Yes. Uh, and does the date and time uh, within a few seconds look accurate as far as you know? Yes. And, and can we please uh, take that down and bring up uh, 16. And does this look like a video clip from one of the ECB security cameras? Yes. And does this look like one of the clips that was taken and uh, preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. And as far as you know, is the date and time stamp accurate within a few seconds? Yes. Please, and we can take this down and uh, bring up 17, please. Uh, does this look like one of the video clips from the ECB security cameras? Yes. And does this look like, like one of the clips that was taken and preserved uh, by ECB from 2016? Yes. And as far as you know, is the date and time stamp accurate within a few seconds? Yes. Can we please take it down and, and bring up 18? Does this look like a video clip from one of the ECB security cameras? Yes. And does this look like one of the clips that was taken and preserved by ECB from 2016? Yes. Uh, and as far as you know, is the date and time stamp accurate within a few seconds? Yes. Could you please take it down and bring up 25? And does this look like a security uh, camera footage from one of the ECB security cameras? Yes. And does this look like one of the clips that was taken and preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. And as far as you know, are the date and time stamps accurate within a few seconds? Yes. If we could pull up 26.
And does this look like a, a video from one of the ECD security cameras? Yes. And does this look like one of the, the clips that was taken and preserved by ECB since 2016? Yes. And as far as you know, uh, is the date and time accurate within a few seconds? Yes. And just to confirm, that is your signature at the end of this document, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Did anyone assist you in drafting this declaration? <clears throat> Uh, yes. And who was that person? Uh, Mr. Waldman. And did Mr. Waldman's assistance in drafting your declaration have any influence or effect on the truthfulness of your statements in your declaration? No. Um, is this a true and accurate copy of your first witness statement submitted in the UK action? Yes, it appears to be. Mr. Patterson, the statements contained in this first witness statement, are they truthful? Yes, anything that I would have put on here and signed would have been truthful. Did Mr. Depp ever offer you any money? No, he did not. Between May 21st, 2016, which I'll represent to you was a Saturday, and May 27th, 2016, which I will represent to you was a Friday, did you work on site at the Eastern Columbia building? I don't recall if I was there those days. I'm typically there Monday through Friday, but I do not recall if I was there those days. Sitting here today, do you have any recollection of interacting in person with Ms. Hurd at any point between May 21st, 2016 and May 27th, 2016? As I had previously mentioned, I, I don't recall specific dates of when Ms. Hurd stopped by the office. Um, I, I, I don't recall the specific dates. Alejandro Romero was another person that spoke to you about his interactions with Ms. Hurd? That I don't, I'm not 100%. I, I, I don't recall exactly. Was Cornelius Harrell one of the people that spoke to you about his interactions with Ms. Hurd? I also don't recall a specific interaction with Cornelius. Do you recall when Ms. Esparza first came to you about her observations of Ms. Hurd? I don't recall a specific interaction. I have a recollection of, uh, I guess, Trinity stopping by, um, but I don't, I don't remember the exact uh, interaction. And are the statements contained in paragraphs 15 through 18 truthful? As I review it, um, yes, that is my recollection of the occurrences. What footage do you recall Ms. Esparza showing you? I recall Ms. Esparza showing me video of the mezzanine level uh, where the multicolored area rug is, um, of Amber with her sister and Rocky um, and one of them, from what I remember, um, fake punched Amber in the face um, in which they all started laughing and then they walked off screen. You recall the date of that surveillance footage video that you just described? I do not. Do you recall whether it occurred after May 21, 2016? I, I don't recall. Mr. Patterson, does this, after reviewing paragraph seven of your declaration that you signed under the penalty of perjury, does this refresh your recollection as to whether or not you observed the surveillance footage sometime around May 24th, 2016? Yes. Okay, let's, let's go through the first interaction that you remember with Ms. Hurd. Can you tell me what you remember about that interaction? So I, Amber came in, shook her hand, um, and she told me the situation where she needed to have me make a statement to her sources at People Magazine. Did Ms. Hurd explain to you why she wanted you to speak to her source at People Magazine? I don't remember the exact, I don't recall the exact uh, ask 
Um, it was something to do with her getting um, ridiculed in the eye of the public opinion or something like that. Can I please have exhibit three pulled up? And for the record, it's Bates stamped DEP 3628. <clears throat> Mr. Patterson, does this video clip represent a true and accurate copy of one of the original clips that was produced in response to a subpoena in, in 2016? Yes. And was this clip recorded and kept in the regular course of business for Eastern Columbia Management? I misspoke. Let me rephrase. Was this clip recorded and kept in the regular course of business for Eastern Columbia Building? Um, can you expand on that? Yeah, let me rephrase it. Um, <clears throat> This is surveillance footage. This is a clip of surveillance footage that was recorded for business purposes at ECB. Yes? Yes, that is correct. Okay. And it was kept or preserved by ECB, right? Yes, that is correct. Do you know the, which camera uh, this particular clip was showing footage from? We can perhaps replay it because I believe it might indicate that. Uh, yeah, if we can pull it up again. Do you know which camera this is showing uh, footage from? Uh, so this would have been the penthouse elevator. And if we could please pull up exhibit four.
Does this video clip represent a true and accurate copy of one of the original clips that was produced in, in response to a subpoena in 2016? Uh, it appears to be. I, there's nothing going on right now, but yes. And which camera is this showing footage from? Uh, this is also the penthouse elevator. If I could please have exhibit five pulled up. And for the record, that's state stamped DEP 3641. And does this video clip represent a true and accurate copy of one of the original clips that was produced in, in um, 2016? Uh, yes, it appears to be. Do you know which camera this is showing footage from? This would also be the penthouse elevator. And what is the date of this footage? May 21st, 2016. Okay, if you could please pull up exhibit six, date stamped DEP 3648.
does this video clip represent a true and accurate copy of one of the original clips that you produced in 2016? Uh, it appears to, it appears so. I don't recall this exact time of this clip, but yes, it, it does appear so. And is it, uh, what is the date on this video clip? May 21st, 2016. And which camera is this showing footage from? Um, if we can wait for the doors to open. So this is also the penthouse elevator. Mr. Patterson, I will show you next a video clip that's been fate stamped DEP 3610. It's Patterson Exhibit 7. Does this video clip... present a true and accurate copy of one of the original clips that was produced in 2016? Uh, yes, it appears to be so. <laughs> Do you know which camera this is showing footage from? This is the front desk camera in the lobby. Next, can we please have exhibit eight pulled up, which for the record is DEP 3620. Mr. Patterson, does this video clip represent a true and accurate copy of one of the original clips that was produced in 2016? Yes, it appears to be so. Do you recognize who the person is that entered the elevator at 2256? Um, it appears to be Amber Heard. Can I please have exhibit nine pulled up?
Does this video clip represent a true and accurate copy of one of the original clips that was produced in 2016? Yes, it appears to be so. Do you know which camera this is showing footage from? Uh, this is also the penthouse elevator. Can I please have exhibit 10 pulled up? And for the record, this is bait stamped DEP 3607. Does this appear to be? video clip of a true and accurate copy of one of the original clips that was produced in 2016. Uh, yes, it appears to be so. And do you know which camera this is showing footage from? This is also the penthouse elevator. And what date is depicted? May 25th, 2016. Next, can I have please exhibit 12, which for the record is bait stamp DEP 3572. Does this video clip represent a true and accurate copy of one of the original clips that was produced in 2016?
yes, it appears to be so. And do you know which camera this is showing footage from? This is the front desk lobby camera. And what is the date of this video clip? May 25th, 2016. And if we could please go to, really, if I could ask for your help, 1345. I'm going to mark this exhibit as uh, Patterson Exhibit 12. Do you recognize the woman at the desk, walking to the desk? Yes, it looks like Amber Heard is approaching Trinity as far as I'm working at the desk. Can I have Exhibit 13 pulled up, please? And for the record, it's bait stamped depth 3583. Does this video clip represent a true and accurate copy of one of the original clips that was produced in 2016? Uh, yes, it appears to be so. And do you know which camera this is showing footage from? Uh, 
Uh, this would also be the penthouse elevator. And what is the date of this video clip? May 25th, 2016. Do you recognize the woman in the black shirt just outside the elevator? Uh, yes, Amber Heard. So is this one of the video clips that represents true and accurate copy of the original clips that was produced in 2016? Uh, yes, it appears to be so. And what is the date of this video clip? May 25th, 2016. And what camera angle, or excuse me, what camera is this showing footage from? Uh, this is the mezzanine camera between the building and the parking garage. Is that camera four? Uh, according to the stamp, yes. Thank you. If we could please mark that as exhibit 14. Turning to uh, Patterson exhibit 15, date stamped at depth 3569. Does this video clip represent a true and accurate copy of one of the original clips that was produced in 2016? Uh, yes, it appears to be so. And uh, what is the date of this video? May 25th, 2016. And which camera is this showing footage from? Uh, this is camera seven, lobby camera. And does this video clip represent a true and accurate copy of one of the original clips that was produced in 2016? Uh, yes, it appears to be so. And what is the date of this video? May 24th, 2016. And uh, what camera is this showing footage from? Uh, this is camera number six, which is the kiosk camera outside on Broadway. Thank you. And can we please mark this security clip as Patterson Exhibit 16? Next, can I please have Patterson Exhibit 17, depth? Three five nine four. Does this video clip represent a true and accurate copy of one of the original clips that was produced in two thousand sixteen? Uh, yes, it appears to be so. And what camera is this showing footage from? Uh, this is camera number eight, um, Broadway, outside of the, the permanent building. What is the date of this video? May 24th, 2016. Thank you. If we could please mark this security clip as Patterson Exhibit 17. Almost done. Turning to video clip that has been bait stamped depth 3609, Patterson Exhibit 18. Does this video clip represent a true and accurate copy of one of the original clips that was produced in 2016? Uh, yes, it appears to be so. And do you know which camera this is showing footage from? This is camera four, uh, which is the service hallway. And what date is depicted in the security clip? Uh, May 22nd, 2016.
Thank you. Can we please mark this video clip as Patterson Exhibit 18? Next, Patterson Exhibit 19, DEP 3611. Does this video clip represent a true and accurate copy of one of the original clips that was produced in 2016? Uh, yes, it appears to be so. And uh, what camera is this showing footage from? This is camera 13 mezzanine level. And what is the date on this video clip? Uh, May 22nd, 2016. Thank you. Can we please mark the security clip as Patterson Exhibit 19? Turning to Patterson Exhibit 20, which for the record is fate stamped DEP 3612. This is one of the video clips that represents a true and correct copy of one of the original clips that was produced in 2016. Uh, yes, it appears to be so. And what camera is this showing footage from? Uh, this is the garage camera number two. And what is the date of this video clip? May 22nd, 2016. Thank you. Can we please mark the security clip as Patterson Exhibit 20? And do you know what camera this is showing footage from? This is parking garage camera number 14. And what is the date on this video clip? May 22nd, 2016. Thank you. Can we please mark this security clip as Patterson Exhibit 21? Mr. Patterson, I believe you previously testified or counsel informed you that there were 87 video clips that were produced in response to a subpoena in 2016. Do you recall that testimony? Yes. And um, all 87 video clips the best of your recollection as the person most knowledgeable for um, property, excuse me, action property management. Were those 87 video clips recorded and kept or preserved in the regular course of business for Eastern Columbia Building? Yes. And were those clips collected, preserved, and produced near the time of the actual events recorded in the clips? Uh, yes, it would have been within that 20 to 30 day timeline. Right. And it was the regular practice of the Eastern Columbia building to record security footage similar to what is reflected in these clips that you've been shown today, correct? Yes, that's correct. Mr. Patterson, I believe uh, you testified earlier that you commented on revisions to Mr. Waldman's draft declaration, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Sure. And I would like you to read please the comment uh, the third comment down, um, which says, was this footage found? I'm, I'm not certain of the date or time. I also do not recall who she was with, but it was two females. I do not recall who threw the pretend punch. I also do not recall if, if she had any signs of injury during this time. However, I do recall one of the females pretending to punch Amber um, in the face. Now, is, do you, did you write this comment? I... Do you remember it? I do recall uh, vaguely. And this 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 footage is never was found. Is that correct? Your sure. knowledge. The footage was never requested. By whom? Any of the attorneys. So the footage. 
if it was, is it your testimony that, that, that this exists, this footage exists or not? It would no longer exist. And it would no longer exist. And it was never produced as one of the 87 clips. Is that right? That is correct. And I believe you testified earlier that attorneys for both sides selected times and looked through video and made selections of what to preserve. Is that, is that, was that your testimony? Yes, that's correct. But nobody selected that footage? To your knowledge? Not to my knowledge, no. And it was never produced? Not to my knowledge, no. Um, and is it correct that, that, uh, that you do not recall at that time whether Amber had any signs of injury? At this moment, no, I do not recall. And according to that comment, you did not recall at that time. Is that your understanding? I don't recall. And you don't know the date or the time of that footage? I don't recall, and obviously I could read this, but I, I don't recall offhand. And you didn't recall at the time either. Is that right? That's correct. All right. That completes testimony, correct? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your extra time tonight. I just wanted to get through that witness tonight so we could start with a new uh, witness tomorrow, okay? So have a good evening. Again, don't do any outside research. Don't talk to anybody about the case. Probably stay off social media. I would appreciate it, okay? And we'll see you in the morning at 10 a.m., okay? Thank you. Okay, well, I know six weeks sound like a lot of time, but um, it's only 24 days and we've already done three days. So you have 21 days left. You know, stipulations is one of my favorite words. So you might want to consider looking back through all the evidence that you have and stipulate on a lot of information because I promised the jury would be done by Memorial Day weekend and we will be done by Memorial Day weekend. So when your time is up, your time is up. Uh, my law clerk, Sammy, is tracking everybody's time who's how much time has been used by each side so you'll keep doing that throughout the trial and we'll let you know on a weekly basis how it's going but if things don't speed up in the deposition you're just not going to get through this so i want you to keep that in mind okay all right um any remote witnesses tomorrow do if we need to set that up no more okay all right great thank you have a good evening we'll see you at 10 o'clock okay thank you